Clinton Star X ray spectrum by Lefty Tarchuk. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I want to present you spectral and timing signature black hole and neutron star. Uh, from observation, this signature is found in observation, but was uh, theoretically predicted. It's some kind of uh, strategy which uh, uh, Professor Tutukov yesterday discussed with us. So some kind of first principles uh, should be understood in the beginning and then we should find signatures of this um, or some kind of pre preliminary estimates should be done and then we should, uh, should uh, try to find such object in the universe. It's a proper um, approach, strategy. It's, uh, this only strategy which should be done in science, because otherwise it's uh, astronomy is a zoology. People just uh, do classification without any uh, uh, deep understanding of what is going on. I, uh, I was just impressed by uh, Professor Tudukov presentation and his uh, thinking about it. So in th this way I want to present this study black hole versus neutron star. So this um, uh, black hole versus neutron star review previous results. It's quite, uh, this is uh, uh, our, uh, <coughs> our plan. Review previous results, the Basak's and the observation uh, black hole and neutron star comparative spectral analysis and spectral signature black hole and neutron star, uh, results and uh, final conclusion. Okay. So, the uh, goal of this presentation to demonstrate that X-ray observation, uh, in X-ray observation, there is objective model independent, model independent formation regarding the nature of compact objects. No free parameters. If you look, uh, if you are presented in some talks in Gather Space Flight Center, other university, you can see uh, usually speakers present fitting of the data when there are many, many parameters. And uh, in this case, uh, you don't need, uh, you don't understand anything from these observations. This is uh, particularly for young people uh, it's uh, very useful to uh, understand how to proceed with uh, uh, analysis of the data. So, and then I eliminate status of our results, obtaining up to now for black hole and neutron star, and then model independent observational and timing signature black hole and neutron star. This is my plan. So, how we can distinguish black hole from neutron star? This is the point. So, rapid variability in black hole and neutron star the same. Uh, high soft, uh, low hard state transition in black hole. Uh, I'll, I'll go in details on this. Uh, we can uh, see in neutron star the same. Particularly, it's uh, very difficult to distinguish between low hot state of neutron star and low hot state of black hole. You don't see anything because Compton Cloud uh, work as a uh, perfect screen. This is uh, quite amazing. Electron temperature, if you uh, feed data by computerization model, for example, in computerization model, the key parameter is spectral index and uh, temperature, which is determined by exponential cutoff. A temperature 50 keV, but for neutron star 30 keV. Of course, this is quite interesting question, why temperature is uh, less for neutron stars than for black hole. We can, uh, I can argue about it, but it's not uh, <coughs> solid proof of uh, 
uh, or distinction between a black hole and neutron star. So then uh, broad skew iron line. People say broad skew iron line, it's uh, iron line is produced uh, very close to horizon. But fortunately, or unfortunately for people who claim it, the same broad uh, skew iron line shell is uh, absorbed for neutron star. <laughs> Even more for white dwarfs, which is the same for the cataclysmic variables. Maybe it's not so broad, but still there. So it means it's not signature black hole. The shape is the same? Shape is the same. It means it's produced very far away. Nothing to do with general relativity effect. It's total bullshit, typical for to get money. Money. It's not surprising when people uh, retired, they don't want from Gather Space Flight Center who claim all this stuff. They don't want to discuss these things anymore. What about people from Cambridge? Like Andrew Fabian? Absolutely Andrew Fabian, but this is, we know this. It's called Marxism Lenin. <laughs> you understand? I'll tell them that. Yeah, of course, you should tell them. It's, we know this. We were very quiet when this propaganda works in uh, uh, newspapers, and, but people were very quiet and they don't discuss it only. And I was uh, really shocked when I uh, went to West and see the same thing, but they propagate this stupid stuff uh, years and years. Hot tail, the same for neutron star and both. Maybe then luminosity, a low hot state, uh, low hot state, uh, luminosity, low hot state, neutron star, and four black hole. So it's uh, okay. Okay, what do uh, we see? What kind of uh, this uh, short, uh, small table with uh, black hole? Uh, versus uh, neutron star. This neutron star is identified by uh, coherent pulsation. It's uh, definitely it's, uh, show its reverse uh, versus uh, for this particular object. And this is black hole because I will tell you because uh, why it's black hole because we can estimate mass for this source. So it's now. This uh, observational broadband data. It's uh, some example. Uh, we, uh, I can provide you more extended <coughs> table. It's a really interesting topic. So this is an illustration for black hole, how we understand from observation point. We have this, Keplerian or Shapovich this, up to some uh, uh, innermost part when it, it's a uh, mm, Compton, uh, Compton cloud there. And uh, in this uh, particular so called Compton cloud, uh, particularly in a low hot state when uh, this uh, innermost region is screened, we uh, uh, imagine spectrum is optimization And of course, we see. Uh, it's, to some extent, uh, uh, this because uh, this uh, source photons are seen in, uh, in, in the emergent spectrum. So, in this region, we also see from observation so called bulk continuation region, where upscattering of soft photons is uh, due to converging flow. Not due to thermal motion, but due to bulk motion. But of course, in a hot state, you cannot see it because it's screened by hot control cloud. So this is a picture. So this is uh, everything here. Okay. Really interesting story because we predicted evolution of black hole from the first principle. Then when I came to um, Ferrara, I uh, worked with uh, uh, 
comentários que a ideia about this source and what kind of spectra she can obtain for this uh, 1650. And then she analyzed data. And she found this evolution. Impressive evolution. It's a uh, um, uh, energy distribution multiplied by photon energy. Photon energy. Because in this case, you see but because index here uh, index uh, for a low hot state is uh, spectral less than one when you multiply by energy square you see but in this presentation you definitely see uh, evolution from low hot state a luminosity more or less is this one way of this one because the luminosity is integral. It's uh, roughly, you can present integral by uh, product of energy at peak. Uh, at peak, uh, so energy multiplied by um, luminosity. So in this case, you can see this is roughly luminosity. And the luminosity, if you see, for example, soft state, you can say soft, because uh, peak, so speak. Then you see not only distribution photon power energy, you see luminosity. Uh, in soft state, luminosity is higher than in fact. It's just from a picture. If you pre present a uh, right picture, you see the whole field. So it's low hot state, then it's going to uh, intermediate state this intermediate state and finally to high soft state. You see clear evolution from low hot state to high soft state without any regulation. This is the point. And of course, uh, then you can see immediately uh, see parameters of spectrum. What are parameters? Main parameters. High energy cutoff, it here, cutoff, here, uh, so uh, temperature, uh, you should take this energy uh, divided by two. And then you roughly, you can estimate immediately uh, uh, plasma temperature. Another thing very, which is very important, extended power. I'll discuss it, but from observation point of view, you see how uh, power law uh, changing from a spectral index uh, less than one, because I multiply by energy square, up to um, energy here. Uh, so you should divide it by two. It's uh, uh, more than a uh, photon uh, spectrum was more than two. More than two. <coughs> OK, what we can say? Okay, this is an interesting story, particularly interesting for Russian people, because uh, people know the problem of continuation was uh, started with a uh, uh, classified report 1949 by a big team. Okay. Okay. Don't go okay. to the door. No, no, no. This is an interesting story for Russia. Because this uh, was classified report written in 1949. Uh, team from Arzamas. And this team uh, consists of many, many people, including Yakov uh, Balintzidovich, Molandau, uh, Yakov. And, uh, uh, and then uh, they derive uh, equation for photon interaction uh, with plasma, which called uh, after that uh, component's equation. Uh, and, uh, and they finally published their results in 1956 uh, after this uh, uh, <coughs> And uh, when it was unclassified, 
and uh, companies uh, publish uh, results of um, photon diffusion in space and time, in infinite uh, space and time. This problem, the diffusion operator, and they solve for initial condition and they find solution. But emergent spectra for and people, even Yakov Borisovich and Kolya uh, Shakurov, when they published their paper in 1969, uh, they uh, tried to use this equation, diffusion equation. I don't go in details of equation, and they presented the uh, evolution of uh, spectra depending of uh, product optical depth square and uh, temperature. But in fact, emergent spectrum for compact objects uh, really undergo um, diffusion not only energy in space. In this case, for stationary problem, you should consider diffusion uh, uh, <coughs> photon diffusion and energy new. It's uh, uh, frequency by energy, and tau it's uh, optical depth. So you should for, uh, solve this diffusion equation. But solution of this diffusion equation, it's a convolution <clears throat> of this solution. And result is different. And now some kind of uh, confirmation what I'm talking about for Russian people, it's written, it's written in the conclusion to paper by uh, company eight. Uh, so about uh, acknowledgement to Zildovich, Landau, Gerfand, famous mathematician, and uh, my, uh, many results was obtained by Jakov. I think he died something in 52, 53, be, before um, this uh, paper was unclosed. But in fact, in appendix, which was not read by anybody, only by me, I found Diaka who wrote, I think he wrote the whole paper. He understood how this result should be generalized for emergent spectrum compact objects. But he died in 52. And he did not know, of course, application of this. Dmitriev was also uh, in mark this team of report classified report. Dmitriev. Oh, da, yes, yes, yes. You know him personally? Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is interesting story for a particular for young people. Okay. But what is the uh, mm, uh, roughly speaking, green function, when you inject uh, monochromatic soft photons in this system, you can uh, obtain a response of uh, diffusion for monochromatic. In terms of green function, this is green function for monochromatic injection. It's broken power. Broken power, you see, for high energy, this is X sub zero, it's uh, energy of uh, dimensionless energy uh, divided by, for example, uh, electron temperature. And for uh, X more than X zero, it's uh, X minus alpha. And for X less than X zero, you have positive. We found this solution with UIF in 1980. And even uh, more for uh, for high uh, energies. So, and then uh, in order to obtain energy spectrum uh, in, uh, for uh, for black hole injection, you should convolve this uh, with uh, convolve the green function with uh, with blood body spectrum. So, the body component is the. Uh, uh, energy range is uh, not from 0.4, not 5 kV wrong here, it's written wrong. But then uh, you can uh, convert for the body uh, of temperature less than 1 kV with this green function. It's just solution, no parameters, nothing. 
see? Now it's observation. Observation using this simple model. Kolesnikov is Gona Gallard. He was my graduate student at that time. He analyzed the signal six month data, GRS 1915, 15, 15 or 15. And he found this evolution of the index of containerization spectrum versus so called tubular frequency. In power spectra, we see a signature of uh, quasi periodic oscillation. Maybe I'll show you this uh, plot. And she found how uh, photon index depends on uh, QPO frequency. It's plateau up, uh, when uh, QPO frequency uh, uh, has a low value and then increases in situ. The same found for 1950. And 50, 1915 and uh, 1550. And uh, more or less, it's the same. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, I asked him to make plot of photon index versus break frequency in power spectrum, and he found similar things. What it means? Interesting story. What it means? This is just observation. <laughs> Then she produced this, you see, uh, we published this paper in 2007, I think, the first paper. And she found the evolution of index versus time. Because people say, oh, signals is one, always in low cut state when the photon index is about 1.5. You have a lot of points, which is about 1.5. But it also you see points where index more than 2. So, signal 6 1 really undergo uh, <clears throat> evolution from low hat state to soft state. Okay, I should uh, do fast. Okay. Now, I said 4 3 3. I'm telling you how she's not here, but anyway, we found evolution of window versus so called um, this uh, <clears throat> uh, broken power law and normalization this proportional mass accretion uh, yes uh, mass, uh, accretion mass rate uh, and uh, you see evolution of index evolution of index uh, versus this uh, uh, normalization which i told you proportional m dot and the uh, increase and then saturates and this uh, depending on uh, so-called continuation fraction elimination. No correlation here. Anyway, I'll show you some results. Now we find, from observation point of view, we found index saturation. And we claim this uh, signature black hole. Observation signature, if you want. So we firmly established what an index situation. Uh, dependent on dot for 1915 SS433 signal 6-1 and in paper with uh, Nikolai Shaposhnikov in a astrophysical journal we present a uh, strong argument uh, for this index situation I'll try to present today. So uh, really uh, this index situation was predicted as a black hole signature Solution of relativistic kinetic equation, not diffusion equation, full relativistic kinetic equation I solved with the uh, help of uh, Thomas Zanis in 1998, and I found this index. I'll show you. And the extensive multi gamma simulation, after that I went to Sacre, we discussed these things with Philip Laurent, and we demonstrate this index saturation using the current simulation. Okay, what about neutron star? You see, I talk about only in observation. This is interesting. This is a plot when we presented uh, this uh, uh, change of normalization, as I told you, this proportional mass accretion rate. Distance is the same. 
So it's a uh, normalization divided distance, square. The temperature, electron temperature, you see it's uh, uh, more or less uh, uh, for, as I told you, 15 TV in some, uh, for some spectra. For us, it's actually about 5 TV. Index, what is interest, interesting here? It's observation, pure observation, no speculation, no bullshit. Index. Spectral index or photon index minus one. About one. Why? Why? It's pure observation. Precisely like Professor Tutukov yesterday said. You should find some signature from observation. And then you can explain. If you have right uh, model or uh, ideas. This is more or less uh, the same. I five also, minutes. Five minutes. Six. Okay. It's an interesting story, you see. So, this is also uh, some geometry for, for neutral star. You remember here was black hole for black hole, but this neutral star with firm surface, quantum cloud around, the same from uh, observation uh, point of view. Uh, so neutron star sources work as a reflector. And uh, you see index for 1728, no evolution, nothing, just about two. For the index or spectral index around two. It's been found. Why? Why? It's real difference. From observation point of view, you see real difference. And this is example of uh, RXT spectra for 1728. It's really, uh, it's, uh, if you multiply energy square, you have flat here. It's example. This is for 1728, you see the pan electron temperature index 2. The distribution of index uh, histogram around 2 photon index. Uh, this is another um, example of a neutron star source. Uh, it's the same story, index around, uh, photon index around 2. Z3, Z3 plus 1, the same story, observation, pure observation, no bullshit, you see results. Of course, Russian people always interested, why? Always good question. But if you have a model with many, many parameters, you don't, you can obtain this result. Therefore, you don't have any question, no problem for you. So this is a, uh, Gx3 uh, plus one, uh, the distribution. Distribution for many uh, sources, you see plateau and then drops. If you go in detail, for uh, in some cases, uh, when temperature increases, you see drop of energy index. You, you should explain this. This typical uh, distribution, uh, spectra for low hot state, low hot state, it means blue, and high soft state, it's red, and you see uh, no difference in limits. Okay. This is neutron star, uh, depending on spectral state, I'll go faster, low hot state. Then you see evolution for GRS 1915, from uh, low hot state uh, to high soft state, similar what you have for 1650, I already showed this. Uh, and this is uh, for... So now why uh, we see saturation of index? This is a key point. Maybe I should uh, show you this uh, before you stop me. Yes, <laughs> two minutes. Two minutes, good, good. Two minutes plus. <laughs> <laughs> so, index is uh, 
Uh, index is, uh, I, it's, uh, I demonstrate index, total index is inverse proportion computation parameter. But computation parameter, which is derived from, uh, for example, textbooks of Rabbit E. Lightman, it's uh, for thermal computation. In fact, computation parameter is the product of number of scattering and efficiency, what is written here. Number of scattering multiplied by efficiency. And what we see in, uh, for a black hole saturation, it means it's getting constant. So and now what we uh, have uh, what we have the situation in terms of scattering. Number of scattering for thermal compensation, it's tau square because it's real diffusion space, but um, <coughs> Gaining energy in converging flow only um, uh, occurs along gradients, only along gradients. Therefore, number of efficient number of scattering is proportional optical depth or mass efficient rate. But efficiency for um, efficiency for uh, efficiency uh, for uh, Mm -hmm. upscattering in converging flow when you can neglect a uh, uh, thermal effect. It's one over tau. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when you multiply tau divided by tau, you have constant. First principle, Malenin-Burenin, like we said. It's uh, very simple. Every student can understand this even uh, first course of uh, first course, uh, first course of so this is uh, uh, the same story how you can obtain uh, power law due to upscattering. So for just it's uh, uh, similar to Fermi acceleration, you have power law. You, so this is uh, intensity proportion of probability of scattering power K. It's gaining energy the same like interest rate. Uh, the same story with uh, getting money. So you have spectral index. And uh, this is a formula for spectral index using this parameter. But this is a very interesting. Solution of full kinetic equation with a temperature uh, low temperature. I solve this, this kinetic equation. Full kinetic equation, and they found this index situation. This very strong result, analytical, everybody can check it. For black hole, when you're dealing with uh, upscattering of soft photons and converging flow, you have saturation. Saturation. So this is the same story. So now low frequency GPOs velocity divided size, and size is uh, proportional mass and therefore frequency or uh, uh, ratio of frequency nu1 over nu2 it's proportional um, uh, black hole masses it's also analytical prediction it's analytical prediction now for neutron star you can uh, go to paper by Zildovich and Shakura, uh, energy is in uh, uh, boundary layer and uh, cooling due to um, uh, uh, photon scattering. And you found this very interesting story. You can find this very interesting story. Uh, this compensation parameter when two disks Photon flux from the disk versus uh, energy um, in corona, much less than one, you have constant. It means index is constant. What's the value of this index? Value of index from this formula for any body minus 3 over 2 plus square root of 9 over 4. What is this? 1 from first principle. This is an amazing story. You cannot, uh, when you understand using first principle, 
this, you will not only solve the problem analytically and uh, uh, numerical, whatever, but you understand, you understand from the observation results from first principle. This is a very interesting uh, story for uh, observation. Now, you see this uh, picture, very important picture, for uh, the rest 1915, but saturation of index, then 339, saturation of index, uh, uh, evolution of saturation, and for uh, neutron star, index is the same. In the, the same. So I, I don't want to explain this, now it's uh, uh, obvious for you. Now, uh, illustration for uh, what hole you have uh, index evolution. For neutron star, index is the same. This is observations. Now observations. Observation, 1950. Uh, if you take a, a correlation of index versus QPO frequency, which we see, you can determine mass. Why? Because QPO frequency in just proportional mass. Ah, QPO, the QPO frequency here um, you, you can use. Uh, it's uh, written here uh, logarithm of uh, frequency give you a ratio of mass. It was a theoretical prediction. And you use this correlation. It also should be self-similar. You can determine mass for GNS 1915 here. From this first principle, it's 15.6 uh, solar mass plus minus 1.5. So the same story uh, for uh, this uh, for what here. 1630 versus 1550. The same story for uh, black hole mass determination. Okay. Well, time is over. Hmm? Time is over. I, I know. I know. I show only results. So now it's uh, uh, ULX one, uh, so the same story. ULX one question: What is this? Black hole and neutron star. But we found, we found evolution of index and saturation. It means black hole. It means, it means you find the evolution of index precisely like for galaxy. The and then what is the mass? What is the mass? Uh, mass uh, here, uh, this photon for another is uh, 243. And the uh, evolution of index is black hole. Uh, and uh, now you can determine uh, ULX1 uh, M101 compared with uh, uh, galactic black holes. You can determine mass of this object. It's a few times 10 to 4. And now the same story for um, ESA uh, HLX1 using the scaling, you find mass. Then for NGC 4051, famous uh, AGN, you found uh, comparing with Cygnus 61 against this point, and uh, you find mass of this with very high accuracy. Uh, now, what we have here, BILAC. BILAC, we published this paper, index evolution. So, after comparing this index evolution with black hole uh, candidates, galactic black hole candidates, just a minute. You see, I'm very close to them. So, you can also determine mass for BILAC. Now our recent results, it's in SPH. TV sources, tidal disruption event, big question. And you found index evolution for this particular source, for this particular source and uh, another one. And we, uh, for uh, 1644, using C observation by C uh, this C instrument, C. And compared to uh, galactic black hole, we found mass a few times 10 to 6 solar masses. But you see, uh, index situation is quite low. It means we are quite low um, 
high temperature for quantum cloud, even in soft state. I think that's it. So this is what we I demonstrate you. New methods of evolution of the pole using observable index QP of frequency or mass accretion rate. In soft state, this index QP and M dot correlation shows intersaturation uh, at high values or low frequency or mass accretion rate. And it's a signature of black hole. It's a index saturation observation evidence of existence of converging flows. On the other hand, the neutron star spectral index doesn't vary. You say almost one. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is a story. Very interesting report, and I think, despite the lack of time, we have a few questions. Okay. Please. I have a comment. Okay. Uh, many thanks for your work. Uh, it is uh, important to result because you have uh, given uh, the method to distinguish between neutral star and the code with the mean, with the physical mean. Absolutely. Yeah. Physical mean is using first principles. Yeah. And people should understand it. The wisdom and physics. Yeah, wisdom and physics. Yeah. Because we are from Russian school. Yeah. We were uh, uh, we were convinced by our books, by what I read to Sanchez. Everything should be understood in terms of fundamental physics. This teaching, teaching is... I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Please, any questions? Yeah. Please. The spectral index is what uh, probe 2. Uh, index 2 or spectral index 1? What you have shown, spectral index for black holes. Uh, it's a uh, uh, index saturation. In the saturation for black holes, yes. depending on uh, depending on temperature of quantum cloud, it's quite interesting question. But it's because two. Uh, no, 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 no. For no, no. it's a uh, two for neutral star is same, yes. but but for black hole for 1915, this spectral index three, but for other source source like this is one. It's 2.32. Uh, what's interesting is that it is close to spectral index, best spectral index, what I have shown yesterday. Look, uh, uh, the end of the end, <laughs> no, and that square. Is. Isn't it the worst uh, of this obviated uh, uh, book in Russia? He left the obviated book, he pressed the slice, and he gave the code of Sakhani. No, 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 I was going to ask you. Uh, the neutron that's got the obvious new using Marine Borelian, simple arithmetic. Uh, Photon index should be two all for neutron star using simple equation. For blood holes, uh, depending on temperature of quantum star. We can discuss in details. In, uh, okay, so. I have also one question. Uh, <laughs> yesterday we had a very interesting report by Professor Visnavata about the regulation line in uh -huh. the electric pulse. Yeah, and I, I remember uh, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, after uh, very famous results of quantum observatory, uh, uh, black hole uh, candidates uh, were observed near the galactic center. And the main uh, reason for, for that is just a black hole by academician Sinai was that the annihilation line in the spectrum. What do you think about no, annihilation no, line? Like oh, a, this is like an indication on the black hole. No, really, I wrote paper about this. A few papers now I submitted this paper. Annihilation line in black hole should be restricted and you see peak around from uh, 20 TV to 40 TV. You cannot see direct annihilation line for mm -hmm. black hole. That's also also claim. Uh, why uh is very silent now? Mm -hmm. Because OSI published analyzed the results and they found anything. And from first principles, because an angulation line is uh, generated very close to horizon, mm -hmm. you understand? It's and that's for shifting. Accepted. Factor 20. Mm -hmm. And you can mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. about people mm -hmm. say this is mm -hmm. about nothing. Mm -hmm. they, uh, uh, we see the signature in the intermediate state only mm -hmm. when optical depth is not so high, but it's not so low. Very interesting question. I really appreciate it. Thank you.
Okay, I, I would like to, uh, I try to shorter my talk because a very important previous talk. I, I like this uh, investigation of the phenomenological initially, but very good theory of continuation and uh, <coughs> very important, uh, very important notes uh, about the company Diakov equation. Jakob yeah. company. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. because the God is C for us. Okay. Uh, now I would like to show you my co author, unfortunately, cannot come here. Uh, Dr. Simakov. Uh, he was a uh, postgraduate student many years ago, but very good mat mathematical, astrophysical man. And he helped us to uh, give the, some theoretical part of this paper. But uh, the main part of this paper is the... Uh, uh, oh, mamma mia. What is it? Uh, uh, that is courses. And uh, you see the name. Smooth optical cell similar emission of gamma ray bursts. We found the some universal uh, behavior of the optical emission uh, coincided or very close to the gamma ray bursts. Mm -hmm. So so called prompt emission maybe. But uh, in this paper recently published in astrophysical journal, we analyzed it optical a lot of optical curves of uh, gamma ray bursts. I'm sorry, face down, yeah. Uh, <coughs> oh, uh, for this time, we have about 100 optical observations of gamma ray bursts, very close to the gamma ray uh, girls. But uh, really, this is not afterglow. Initially, this is not pure afterglow. Afterglow is uh, uh, some power law, like power law behavior of optical light curve. But uh, observation of the gamma ray girls at inside the first minutes is very complicated. It is very complicated task for the experimental astronomers. And uh, now, in this, uh, all uh, the total uh, number of this observation, <coughs> about several dozens, maybe two or, two or three dozens of observations. In this paper, uh, we started this work five, seven years ago, where we discovered the first prompt observation from GRB in the Baikal Observatory, Tunka Observatory, uh, which discuss it later in my my colleagues, and uh, after that we uh, found that there are two types of optical behavior, optical emission, two type behavior of optical emission uh, close to the gamma ray burst. The first type is very very uh, noisy and correlated with gamma ray burst. Gamma ray bursts usually very, very flickering behavior, have very flickering. And, uh, but in some case, we see in real time, due to the master observation, when the, uh, on the background of very uh, dramatically changing of gamma ray bursts, we see the very, very smooth light curve, like to parabolic, parabolic, in some coordinates behavior. And we analyzed all historical such type of observation and we found uh, eight very good light curves. Only eight during the 20 years. What is the time in seconds? Yes, this time, logarithm time in seconds. And that is the magnitude, observed magnitude of the optical emission. That is the best curve 
we uh, really we have about three dozens words with no monotony, with maximum, with, with several maximum, with very complicated, but we uh, take only very smooth uh, light curves. But you see, in this case, uh, we have the uh, 10 magnitude differences between 5, 7 magnitude, 3 order differences between maximal optical emission from gamma ray bursts, and we see the several orders the differences in maximum. Now, this is a phenomenological part of our paper, only observation. The zero time it is the gamma ray burst point of trigger, yes? Yes, the zero, uh, zero, zero is a trigger time. Trigger from, from time. gamma observation. Yes, from gamma observation. This is all observational data here. But we renormalized this axis in new coordinates. And we found coordinates where this all very different, like so very similar, very similar. I would like to show you. Uh, you didn't take into account distance to this uh, at uh, Just a moment. We found such coordinate not depending of distance. We 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 not using distance in in our in our coordinate not using distance at all not not included automatically disappear. Ну, Женя, я не знаю, как тут. Ну, куда на? А как не таблица сначала? А почему так? Вот куда я знаю. Это какой PDF ты взял? Во! Yeah, this, this eight, uh, the small class, uh, a little eight, only eight, but best, best in the world. Half of them uh, uh, belong to master observation. Now, uh, last uh, five years, we are the leader of the prompt optical observation in the world. And we observed four light car, and we okay. take something from another people, uh, like to Swift, who what, Rossi, and so on. So. Real physics. Yes. And uh, you see here, what, what does it mean? This means we have the purely smooth optical from the self high, self similar hydrodynamic from this time to this time this similar hydrodynamic automodelic in rus по русски это означает что мы имеем дело с автомодельным решением расширяя только релятивистским решением седого and uh, we can interpret it this part and this part in different way. This is adiabatic booster, relativistic boost expansion, and this non-adiabatic dissipation and uh, because the interaction shock wave with the uh, with the uh, interstellar matter or with the uh, Stellar wind of the progenitor. Some deacceleration, dissipation of the front. This, this emission connected with a very, very uh, smooth interaction between bow shock with a smooth atmosphere. Stellar wind. In other case, in 90% case, we have deal with the non-homogeneous stellar wind or non-homogeneous, non-stable words of the central engine, on the, especially on this, on this phase, on the first phase. So there is two types of the prompt emission in GRB. Was not that maybe this idea theoretically predicted uh, maybe 10 years ago in nature, but now we found this uh, curve belong to the forward show. The another optical emission appear from the back 
uh, reverse shock because uh, uh, this is not purely uh, pure pure um, uh, seed off because uh, the central engine have the some time for the work. So in this case, we have only with the relativistic seed off equation. And the answer dital depend on the magnetic field uh, uh, relation between magnetic field energy, relativistic particle energy, and so so so. But Sidov did not derive relativity. Yes, yes, Sidov. Uh, that is paper is uh, relativistic. Sidov uh, found it uh, twenty years later, in 1974. By uh, I forgot it now. What idea is belong to Sidov uh, exactly? Okay. Uh, I would ah uh, the one point. This time physically in this time the energy uh, the impulse impulse momentum impulse of the book of the relativistic boost is. Uh, in this time, it is equal to the mass of the environment. Uh, how to say? Uh, the mass of the uh, uh, stellar wind around the progenitor uh, is equal to the uh, mass of the effective mass of the jets. And after that, the acceleration uh, started. But that is very interesting that uh, I would like to show you last slide. Oh, mamma mia. That is a quality picture. We must, if we observe with gamma reverse, we must remember we see two types of emission. And uh, uh, that is a smooth, very smooth, very uh, source emission that is the uh, last uh, last uh, goodbye for us from the observers which collapsed to the horizon of the black formatting black hole. That is the uh, call the source emission of the GRB. Thank you very much. <laughs> You, you showed some subclass of gamma reverse, as I understood. You showed some subclass, subclass of gamma reverse, yeah. which are very similar. I know that people are trying to use gamma reverse like standard standards to use like technological tests. Yes. Could, you, could you separate some well, subclass, indicate some, let us say? Good questions, good questions. Uh, 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 the idea, uh, some people stay here because the first paper about Standard uh, GRB as a standard candidate published it in the yes, Peace Master and Mishki journal. Nash, no, Miss Kosti Pasnova, my Mishi Prokhor, was published. But really, this good question we must to see. Maybe this class uh, belong to, yeah, the better, the better example for the candle sometimes. A good idea, okay. You are co author of the next paper. Thank you. If the if the new carbon dust were uh, virgin to neutron size, two neutron size, there are no uh, reason to have carbon dust against the What sort of carbon dust do you think uh, you can uh, uh, You mean? Uh, no, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the Sam Vasily asked me. To, uh, very good, very important questions. I today I show you information only about long GRB. Long GRB not connected usually. Yes, yeah, that, that is a black hole formation. This is a no, this is a core collapse or a pair pair collapse in the very massive uh, stars, isolated star, but very rotating, which discussed by Blinikov and. We discuss it with you, the course of the fast rotating. This is very important 
Ну, вот. And, uh, по-русски я хочу сказать, уже для, есть тут молодежь какая-то, и для людей, которые плохо знают английский, а те, которые не понимают, потом переведут с помощью э, Google переводчика через 20 лет. Значит, я хочу сказать, что есть два метода работы. Первый метод, вот э, наблюдатель, экспериментатор, он берет данные, потом их складывает и пытается нарисовать какую-то сумму. В попытке понять, что там это все ошибки замоются. Но есть всегда э, так называемые динамические, не случайные ошибки, а как, даже не систематика. Ну да, это систематика, связанная с различием в структуре звездного ветра, там еще чего-то. Но ясно, что это все портит истинную природу излучения вот этого. То есть, подобно тому, вот я приводил уже эту фразу, как скульптор, как Роден говорил, как вы, как вы делаете вот такие прекрасные скульптуры, да, беру Глыбу и лишнее убираю. Вот это здесь и сделано. И ни один рецензент долго не понимал, кроме редактора. Редактор э, в конце переписки второго года сказал, слушайте, пошлите, извините название, пошлите мне еще раз, я пошлю другому рецензенту. Этот никогда не пойдет. Идею эту. Ну, да, он бог, он, он, и он поздравил нас. Потом. I would make clear, uh, this uh, smooth light curve uh, <coughs> corresponds to this uh, part, or this light curve. Yeah. It, uh, this. Um, so the next figure. It corresponds on. It corresponds to this part. Yes, you see here. That is wall shock, external shock. And that it is not just a pure prompt emission. It is the results of, uh, how to say, Physical, secondary interaction yes, of... Yes. Uh, real prompt, real prompt uh, in internal yeah, shock. Yes. But in the time, uh, we can see external shock emission, beginning of external, maybe uh, started during the gamma ray burst. Mm -hmm. Because you see gamma ray quanta and the wall shock optical simultaneously. And in third type of gamma ray bursts, we have some diffusion to emission in MGB. So we try to found only pure uh, GRB. Mass, with... uh, mass rust expansion begins. No? Uh, 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 это uh, примерно квадрат, как и предсказывалось для, если вы, if you have the adiabatic relativistic booster, uh, the low is uh, parabolic square, T square. But it is no, not a... a after glow, after is a T minus one, usually, plus minus. And it is after glow, yes? Yes. It is after glow. Yes, but the real is this on one process. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, is, that is all one process. One uh, sources, one source, one automodeli, one, uh, one self-similar uh, one, 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 one physical uh, nature. Ye yes, one self-similar uh, uh, solution. But you shouldn't uh, mention, because uh, usually people dealing with red type. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Fast rise, expansion. Yes, yes. No, no. Uh, uh, fast rise, don't, don't become few. Don't become few. It's the... Okay, let's thank you once again, and now that report by Evgeny Karpovskoy, who tell us about uh, prompt GRB observation by master, yes? Yes. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. Uh, I would like uh, to present you uh, my talk uh, about uh, uh, from GRB observations uh, on uh, master robotic net. Uh, here I am uh, present a talk from the uh, very large uh, master team uh, which uh, work in uh, <laughs> work over the world. Uh, so this uh, list of uh, our co-authors. Uh, so, uh, master, uh, as you know, uh, separate uh, uh, to the uh, 
four continents uh, in uh, eight places in the world, and uh, we uh, try to uh, solve uh, uh, several tasks uh, during uh, the observations of gamma ray bus. Uh, uh, the first uh, uh, task for us it is a, a fast observations uh, of uh, GRB coordinates which we receive uh, from the uh, gamma satellites. Uh, so. Uh, uh, as a result of this task, uh, we uh, could show it on Z plots. Uh, here is a master contribution of uh, uh, fast pointing uh, uh, of gamma ray bus and uh, prompt observations of gamma ray bus. So, at the uh, left uh, figure, uh, there is a master contribution uh, to uh, since uh, beginning of uh, 2015 uh, till now. Uh, of observations of prompt uh, gamma ray emission. Uh, so, uh, so uh, this is a number of uh, uh, pointings and observations uh, which we uh, made very quickly, as quickly as uh, uh, gamma ray bus still uh, be active. So, uh, the time of pointing less than uh, time of GRB, less than uh, T19, uh, uh, of uh, GRB. And so you can see that 85% uh, uh, of uh, most uh, you know, of, of most uh, fastest uh, uh, observations of gamma ray bus uh, was made by uh, MasterNet. Uh, <coughs> so uh, the next uh, uh, task which we uh, try to solve is uh, detection of uh, optical counterparts uh, for this bus. Uh, so, uh, we have a number of uh, success observations uh, uh, which we uh, made and published it uh, also be before any other uh, team published uh, optical counterparts. Uh, for example, uh, there is uh, observations of uh, GRB uh, 150413, uh, where uh, this observation was made by Master Tunka. We have uh, made one of uh, that smooth. Uh, optical light curve, which uh, Vladimir Lipinov present uh, and Brett Lustos task, and uh, for uh, this bust, we also uh, discovered uh, optical sources. Uh, so the master was the first team which they reported uh, uh, that the optical source is. Uh, another much more difficult task. Uh, the previous bust was the bust uh, uh, obtained from SWIFT with uh, a high accuracy coordinate, uh, and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, you you must find uh, the optical source in uh, uh, such this field of view, uh, the error box of the uh, uh, SWIFT bus detector, like this image, like uh, uh, several dozen of minutes uh, and another task it's a find uh, optical transients in a very vast uh, field of view uh, which uh, we taken from uh, uh, Fermi or another satellite mm -hmm. uh, master it is only one uh, project uh, over the world which uh, try to observe uh, in uh, optical uh, uh, by alert method on by uh, inspect method uh, uh, gamma ray bus, which uh, uh, which take to us from uh, from the <coughs> spacecraft uh, uh, from the NASA spacecraft from the sweep. So uh, we try to make a survey inside the vast air box uh, and uh, using our large field of view, cover step by step uh, this uh, very vast uh, air box. And uh, during this survey, try to find uh, new optical transients. The first uh, success case for us uh, was uh, in uh, uh, was GRB 140801. It's about three years ago, uh, where uh, during observations of the uh, pair mirror box, uh, we find uh, very bright optical transients which. Uh, uh, which decay uh, through the one hour. So <clears throat> we not have a very large, large curve of this event just because uh, uh, we make a survey and uh, find this uh, object only on several images. But uh, we discover this optical source and then uh, another group with uh, more powerful telescopes uh, uh, observe it 
and uh, uh, make some science. Another example of uh, uh, such observations uh, uh, much more high, uh, with much more higher airbox uh, than previous case uh, is about uh, uh, 6,000 square, uh, 600 square degree for uh, the winter of this year in the uh, Argentinian telescope uh, uh, where uh, also optical transients was found uh, as a usual transient uh, and firstly we, uh, we publish uh, a tail telegram and uh, uh, only after that we publish uh, uh, GCN telegram when we uh, uh, more detailed analyze, uh, uh, analyze this source. So at all, uh, till uh, this moment we find, we discovered, we discovered uh, three optical uh, transients from the GRB uh, uh, which, uh, which was registered by Fermi satellites and several optical uh, counterparts from uh, Swiss satellites. Uh, uh, I want to remark, we see much more uh, optical sources, but uh, this uh, is uh, sources which we uh, discovered firstly over the world. Uh, the last case, uh, for example, was uh, less than one week ago, uh, GRB 1708. Zero or uh, zero eight uh, tenth a uh, at the Canary telescope with the, at very high zenith distance, uh, only three degrees up to the horizon, uh, with uh, on the image with upper limit like a uh, thirteen, we find very 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 bright uh, object uh, of uh, eleven magnitudes. Uh, also, uh, uh, sometimes we see. Uh, 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 as Vladimir uh, at the previous talk, uh, last day talk, says that uh, generally we prefer to sleep at night, but uh, uh, gamma ray bus occurs at night, of course, and uh, we uh, can't able to publish uh, uh, telegram quickly at night, uh, manually. And uh, we decide that uh, uh, there is a, a good chance uh, uh, to uh, adaptate our software to automatically uh, send a very uh, bright and very uh, clever optical transients uh, to, this, to, this, to uh, GCN uh, with any uh, manual support. And uh, we also uh, have a, a success. Uh, this is uh, uh, <laughs> uh, GRB, which uh, also discussed here, uh, GRB uh, 16, 10, uh, 17, this observe, which was observed by master and uh, lower loss of satellites simultaneously. Uh, but for these satellites, uh, uh, our automatical uh, scheme of observations, GRB, uh, was worked. So you can see uh, that, uh, this is the time uh, since uh, the trigger uh, of the burst. So uh, this was a trigger. Uh, after uh, 25 of seconds, uh, uh, the GCN signal was transmitted uh, to the ground telescope. Uh, after another uh, 20 seconds, uh, master uh, in uh, Amur region, uh, in, in Blagovetsk, uh, uh, report to this uh, uh, place and uh, begin of observations. Then uh, we obtain uh, two images in which automatically was not found any sources. Here you can see some uh, uh, source uh, near the upper limit, but automatically here uh, sources was not found. Uh, but on the next uh, two images at 96 and 130 seconds, uh, uh, there is a two bright uh, sources on Bosch cameras. So you know that master uh, it's a twin telescope, and uh, uh, we find a uh, source four times uh, uh, in, uh, at this time and this time simultaneously at two cameras. This was announced for our internal trigger. Uh, and uh, uh, after, after 48 seconds, uh, uh, the processing of this image were finished. And uh, at that time, at uh, 227 uh, seconds, uh, that image was processed. Uh, you see, it for processing, we spent uh, like about one minute. Uh, and uh, 10 seconds after that, uh, the robot uh, was published automatically uh, the GCN telegram uh, of, of the discovery a new uh, source uh, inside the uh, uh, GRB error box.
uh, this is a particle. This is a cosmic particle. It, it occurs uh, only on uh, one image. Uh, <laughs> it, it is remarkable. It, it's remarkable that uh, uh, sometimes uh, on uh, uh, GRB's uh, uh, images we see particles, and uh, uh, it seems it seems that. Uh, uh, I don't know. Sometimes we see the particle. Uh, I, think uh, it like, I, I, think, I think it feels like nevertheless a random coincidence. Uh, the most, uh, uh, how to say, oh, the most quiet uh, uh, explanation of this uh, it's yours that uh, uh, it's uh, co coincidental events. But uh, uh, we look at many images. Uh, it's uh, I, I could not uh, explain you uh, by uh, scientific words. Uh, it is uh, some sense. I don't know. Okay, uh, let's uh, go next. So you can see uh, the print screen from the ten uh, circular, uh, the ten list, and the uh, first uh, telegram for this event uh, before Swift published it, uh, his telegram was master. Uh, Automatically telegram, uh, automatically observations telegram, and uh, uh, the next uh, uh, next task which we uh, solve uh, uh, during observation uh, during GRB observations is uh, 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 GRB polarizations. So our systems was constructed uh, specially uh, for observations uh, for polarization observations of gamma ray bust. We have a twin telescope. In each telescope, we have uh, uh, two photometers with uh, uh, two perpendicular uh, polarimetry filters. Using this, we can uh, measure low limit of uh, polarizational level uh, using one telescope and, uh, 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 and measure polarization using uh, two different telescopes, like a telescope in South Africa and uh, Canarian Island, where uh, uh, filters uh, uh, located in uh, different directions. Uh, so, uh, using this technique, uh, you, you see uh, it's, it, it's uh, position of filters uh, in a Russian master telescope. Uh, in uh, Blagovich's, we have a 45 angle inclined uh, polarimeters in Junka, the right. Uh, in uh, in Ekaterinburg, uh, also 45, in Kislovodsk, right. And uh, uh, we try to uh, Make my, uh, many dimensions. Uh, many dimensions. Yes. Uh, so uh, using this technique, we uh, obtain uh, we obtain some test observations of uh, well-known polarized objects like uh, quasars. We definitely see polarizations uh, for uh, for instance for uh, quasar. We see 457, and uh, uh, for another object. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, here is a black. Uh, so you see the polarization angle uh, using a different instrument. We could measure it uh, and we could show that, uh, that this technique is work. And uh, mm, no, we make many observations of uh, uh, any gamma ray bus, but we not see uh, any evidence for polarizations. And uh, the first success was uh, uh, is about two years ago in the South Africa, uh, where during the observations uh, of uh, GRB uh, 150301, uh, you see uh, the uh, image from uh, two tubes uh, in a different polarizations. Uh, uh, we make some interesting results. So, uh, as I say, uh, Previous, we make a huge number of light curves. This is only uh, a few of them, uh, in which we have uh, uh, completely no C uh, polarizations. Uh, but uh, also, we have a gamma ray bus uh, from very huge uh, redshift. Uh, uh, but for this gamma ray bus, we have a, uh, uh, this light curve. I must to uh, report to you that uh, uh, for this uh, uh, gamma ray bus is very important uh, the estimations of uh, uh, error of observations. 
you could see that first point uh, seems uh, to have evidence for polarization just because uh, uh, the error bars is not crossed uh, to each other. Uh, when we uh, estimate uh, a, an error of measurements, we overestimate our error each time. Uh, we never uh, use uh, any uh, only statistical uh, errors uh, like a square of flux. Uh, we use uh, uh, the variation of uh, the uh, source. Uh, we have a number of uh, stars around uh, the uh, investigated object, and we see uh, the variations of objects with the same magnitude, and uh, specify these variations as an error of measurements. So our error, uh, uh, at, uh, at least right, uh, and uh, more, uh, moreover, is uh, overestimated uh, than uh, real. And uh, for this first point, uh, the error bar is not crossed. So you can see uh, the image uh, is a full frame uh, of master saw image. It is a uh, 45 angle uh, polarimeter, is not covered full frame, so here the image is not very good, uh, but uh, uh, the scientific image is only here, and uh, the gamma ray bus was there, and there. So, uh, you can see, uh, here you can see the uh, uh, variations uh, uh, diagram for uh, that first point. Uh, you can see the uh, average polarization of uh, uh, reference star uh, of any magnitude, and you see that uh, the uh, GRB source uh, locates uh, a higher, uh, and uh, with uh, uh, with uh, capability level uh, like a uh, two, uh, like a three point two sigma, we can say that polarization for this object uh, not less than seven point five percent. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, but uh, for this uh, object, we have only one uh, point. Uh, 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 till the till that time, it was uh, uh, most uh, closer to gamma ray bust, uh, 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 most closer to uh, trigger uh, measurement of polarizations. But uh, this event uh, was not uh, very long. Uh, here, uh, here there is a. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this was not this was long GRB, but uh, with durations like 16 seconds. And uh, uh, these measurements uh, after approximately minute after the GRB time was not a prompt measurement. And uh, two years ago, when I uh, stay here and uh, present uh, this result on uh, Zeldovich seminar. Uh, <coughs> Uh, we say uh, that uh, uh, we must uh, 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 must wait something uh, some more time and uh, uh, we will receive a good result. We will uh, get a success uh, uh, just because uh, uh, the bright gamma ray bus, which uh, put a spread at that region where we very uh, when we can measure polarizations very clever. Uh, uh, must occur uh, three, uh, two, three times per year, and uh, we must only uh, uh, wait and uh, oh, and um, and must uh, make our equipment uh, in a work stage uh, every day. Uh, see that uh, uh, everything was right, and uh, after one year, we get uh, real success observations. Uh, uh, is approximately one uh, years ago. Uh, I cursed uh, GRP 16.07.25b. Uh, <clears throat> you can see uh, uh, here. You can see the image uh, and the movie from this GRB from uh, very wide field cameras. Uh, uh, yesterday, Vladimir said that uh, master uh, generally have uh, two class of uh, uh, instruments. Uh, first one is uh, 40 centimeters master two telescopes uh, with upper limit like a 20 magnitude and uh, uh, very wide field cameras uh, uh, like a shock camera in Lamanosov satellites uh, which very quickly observe the sky uh, with upper limit like a 12. Uh, uh, 
uh, here uh, was it was a Fermi uh, uh, Fermi GRB, and uh, uh, as I said before, Master is a unique telescope which uh, uh, repoint uh, and uh, try to make alert observations uh, using Fermi coordinates, very vast Fermi coordinates, and uh, our uh, our. Um, uh, and our efforts uh, will lead to success uh, here. Uh, uh, we report uh, the <coughs> sorry, this GRB uh, was have a precursor event uh, here, and uh, Fermi registered that precursor and uh, uh, give us a coordinate. Uh, we report to that place. And uh, uh, large telescope, master two telescope with field of view uh, two square degrees will not. Uh, uh, square. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, four square degrees. Uh, two two per two uh, per, two per two degrees. Uh, uh, generally, four square degrees. Yes. So. Uh, oh. And uh, first time our big telescope uh, will not look at the right position, but very wide field cameras cover the right position of this event. And uh, you see uh, that all started from uh, upper limits. And then uh, let, uh, you see that uh, we see nothing here. <coughs> uh, time is coming, a camera is absorbing. And uh, uh, at that time, of course, a real burst. Here was a precursor. Here, of course, the real bus, and we uh, see very bright eight magnitude uh, optical events. And uh, only after uh, several minutes, uh, the large telescope, uh, triggered by LAT and other Fermi instruments, uh, continue to observations and make observations here. You can see green and blue dots. And uh, <coughs> here, the, uh, the master. Uh, on Canarian Island, Master Yacht uh, start to measure polarizations, and you can see uh, uh, here the polarization level of uh, these events, uh, uh, which in uh, uh, the last point was uh, like uh, 11 uh, percent. So uh, we measure a low level of polarization, so the polarization was at least 11 percent. Uh, uh, oh, three minutes. <coughs> <coughs> so uh, here, the, uh, it is a proof that uh, its result is good. You can see the uh, distributions uh, of the stars, and uh, uh, for uh, these measurements, uh, the uh, sigma level up to 60. 60. So uh, it is very, very uh, strong results. <coughs> Uh, here you can see uh, the uh, simultaneously uh, observations optical and uh, uh, gamma obtained from Fermi instruments. You can see upper limits, and uh, here was a G1, it's the first precursor event. Uh, here is the main event of uh, GRB, and uh, uh, this GRB was so long that uh, uh, after uh, several hundred of seconds, uh, of course, uh, some extended radiation, uh, G4, also uh, registered by uh, gamma instrument. And uh, our last measurement of polarizations uh, just uh, cover the beginning of uh, this uh, uh, G3 extended radiation. Uh, so, uh, as a result, we measure uh, strong polarizations uh, of uh, prompt GRB optical emission uh, here for this bust, which uh, was at least 11 <coughs> percent. So uh, here, in the presented is uh, multi-wave observations. Uh, the black one is uh, observations of uh, gamma ray uh, in gamma ray uh, from the Fermi satellites. As a red point, it is a uh, master very wide field camera observations. And uh, uh, here is another telescope which uh, uh, continue to observe, uh, observe this bust in afterglow stage. <coughs> uh, so uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, polarizations is also can be explained uh, 
using uh, oh, for uh, using internal shock uh, and the external shock model uh, shock wave models uh, in uh, uh, gamma ray bus jets. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Thank you very much uh, for you hear me. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, mm -hmm. about the origin of horizontal. Uh, you see, when you show polarization measurements, mm -hmm. you showed only horizontal error bars for polarization. Could you tell me the origin of these error bars and why you don't have vertical uh, error bars? No, no, previous one. Which this uh, is, yes, 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 this here, one. Yes, 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 I remember. I remember. So here, here, uh, here is a uh, uh, result of polarization with uh, uh, error bar. So the horizontal error bar is a uh, it's a time error bar. Yes, uh, we uh, when we uh, observe, we using uh, uh, not equal ex uh, exposure time. We uh, extend our exposure uh, when we uh, uh, when we observe. We extend our exposure when we uh, mm, uh, when we. This is exposure time. Exposure. Короче, когда мы удаляемся от от времени триггера, мы увеличиваем время экспозиции, чтобы. Да, но у вас на самом большой поляризации самый большой вертикальный горизонтальный error bar. Ну, потому что здесь время экспозиции больше всего. The exposure time here much much higher than here. So here the exposure time is 10 seconds, here 20, here 30, and here 50 seconds. Okay. So uh, uh, the horizontal error bar here is maximum. It's, it's just exposure time. <laughs> uh, but uh, the uh, polarization here, you can see here, uh, here it's uh, big, and uh, here it's very small, and uh, the coincidence dial level is very high. But optical emission is smaller, and, uh, but the error is... Uh, Ooh. Yes, uh, here, uh, uh, here the optical uh, magnitude for the source uh, is uh, really smaller than here. But uh, uh, first of all, exposure time was long, uh, and the uh, uh, signal noise ratio uh, for these uh, points was higher. And uh, the uh, another <coughs> and uh, and uh, another uh, point is uh, uh, here we have uh, more uh, reference stars here. Uh, the optical source is very bright, and we have uh, 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 less uh, reference time comparable for uh, error estimations uh, than here. Uh, one question: uh, You shown uh, you have shown uh, about a dozen of birds uh, we, for which you have uh, optical observations. Yes. And all of them are from robotic telescope or from uh, wide field camera also. Uh, this was the uh, first and uh, right now unique uh, observations uh, uh, observations when we see uh, optical transients uh, from wide field cameras. Uh, till now we have only one uh, only successful one. observations. Uh, but, uh, it uh, means that uh, only one prompt emission. You yes. Only yes, one yes. Prompt emission. No, 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 no. It's not means that. Uh, uh, prompt emission could be observed uh, uh, by uh, trigger method. Uh, Sometimes uh, here, uh, here, uh, here we also uh, observe uh, the catch the tail of prompt emission. Yes, yes, yes. We observe and how much such events? Oh, about three, four. No, no, no much more. Higher. You can see the first plot. You can see the first plot. Um, uh, here, the number of successful observations of prompt emission is twenty-five. Oh, twenty-five. Okay, but. Uh, with my two camera one. Uh, my one two camera one. Okay. Let's thanks once again. And the next report is by uh, Anastasia Tvetkova, cosmological aspects of gamma ray bursts detected with colloquy. <laughs> Так, как я?
Good morning. My name is Natasha Kulkova, and today I would like to present a talk uh, about uh, some cosmological aspects of uh, gamma ray dust uh, detected uh, with uh, Cones Wind on the half of the Cones Wind team. Uh, first, uh, I will briefly talk about uh, the Cones Wind experiment, the dust sample, and the analysis. And, uh, and uh, then I will talk about. Uh, uh, the rest frame harvest intensity correlations, the collection effects, uh, uh, the gamma ray dust detection, detection horizon, uh, the luminosity and energy release functions, and uh, about the gamma ray dust formation rate uh, based on the conus wind data. Uh, the gamma ray dust are uh, very energetic, energetic and uh, very interesting cosmological uh, phenomena. Uh, if we know the redshift, uh, we, could, we can estimate uh, the distance, the age, and the rest frame energetics. Uh, we know uh, redshifts of about uh, 450 gamma ray burst um, by uh, the middle of the past year. Uh, and uh, in my talk, uh, I will uh, in particular focus on uh, the comparison of the gamma ray dust formation rate with the star formation rate. Uh, Conus Wind is uh, the joint uh, Russian United States experiment, uh, and uh, 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 Conus Wind operates more than 20 years. Uh, it doesn't suffer uh, from the Earth occultations, has a uh, very, uh, very um, stable background, and uh, the, spect uh, the spectral uh, data is uh, registered in the wide energy range. Uh, the burst sample under discussion contains 150 gamma ray bursts detected up to the, uh, from the beginning of the afterglow era uh, up uh, to uh, the middle of the past year. Uh, in this work, we use uh, the physical classification um, instead of the phenomenological classification that is. Uh, the type 1 and type uh, 2 bursts, and we have 12 type 1 bursts in our sample, and uh, 32 gamma ray bursts, uh, but, uh, 32 gamma ray bursts, the jet break times are known from the literature. Uh, the reliable, uh, we used uh, the reliable jet break times that is uh, measured uh, based on the optical or in, uh, infrared observations or uh, in observations uh, in uh, two energy ranges, uh, for example, in the X-ray and radio bands. Uh, in the figures are presented uh, the example of classifications. The background uh, gray data <laughs> is taken uh, from uh, the work of Midas uh and the color points from this work. And uh, uh, here is the distribution of uh, conus wind uh, gamma ray dust with non shift threat uh, compared to the distributions, uh, distribution of uh, all gamma ray dust uh, with non shift. Uh, uh, performing the analysis, uh, the first uh, measure, first made uh, the temporal analysis, we measure uh, the durations in this and this energy range uh, uh, into the spectral labs. After that, uh, they perform the spectral analysis of two types of spectra, the time integrated affluence spectra and uh, the peak uh, spectra corresponding to the peak count rate. Uh, we make uh, spectral physics to uh, popular models. The, uh, cut off power law and the band model. Based on the difference of high squared, we define uh, the best model. Uh, then, based on the uh, red shifts, uh, which span in a wide, uh, another wide uh, range, uh, we uh, calculate the isotropic uh, energy releases and uh, peak luminosities. I would like uh, to mark that uh, the luminosities are uh, calculated in the rest frame 64 milliseconds time scale, uh, which partially removes the observational biases. And for the bursts with non jet break times, uh, we calculate the uh, jet opening angles and uh, the collimation corrected energetics. Uh, this slide <coughs> states uh, the dependence of the limiting energy flux uh, uh, on uh, peak energy of maximum of Newton spectrum. Uh, that is, uh, we try to uh, estimate uh, the trigger thresholds and uh, the co uh, the conus wind trigger thresholds uh, in units of uh, the peak flux. Uh, the trigger thresholds of conus wind, uh, the detectors are triggered uh, when the uh, emission is uh, nine sigma value. And here we present, uh, for example, uh, two lines uh, that correspond to uh, 
to the two spectral models uh, with the characteristic uh, spectral parameters. Uh, and the color denotes the trivial significance of uh, the burst from the sample on the, on the logarithm scale. <coughs> Uh, in this slide, uh, we also investigate the selection effect. Uh, in the left panel, is present uh, the dependence of isotropic energy release uh, on the scale uh, on the factor one plus z, uh, and uh, the curve corresponds to the fluent. Uh, to this fluent, uh, the central panel presents the same for the uh, peak for the isotropic peak luminosity, uh, and uh, the right panel presents uh, for uh, selection effects for uh, the rest frame peak energy. Uh, the color denotes the trigger significance. Uh, next, we estimate the Conoswind gamma ray burst detection horizon. Uh, detection horizon corresponds uh, to the uh, maximum redshift at uh, which a gamma ray burst uh, still could trigger Conoswind detectors. Uh, we estimate uh, this value calculating the significance of the peak count rate at a given z, uh, at a given red shift. This is the shift uh, which uh, corresponds uh, to the detection horizon, and this is the magnitude shift. Uh, with uh, uh, calculating the significance, uh, we take into account uh, the time dilation, we take into account uh, the change in the uh, peak count rate time scale. Uh, we take into account the change in the shape of uh, the spectral shape, and uh, we take into account uh, the reduction of uh, the incident uh, bolometric uh, peak, uh, photon uh, peak flux. Uh, the constant uh, trigger time scale scales are 140 milliseconds uh, and uh, one second. So, uh, for these two time scales, uh, we estimate uh, the detection horizon, and uh, the, uh, the highest value is uh, almost uh, 17 uh, for this gamma ray burst is uh, exceptionally luminous. Uh, and uh, this redshift, this high redshift corresponds uh, to the end of the dark ages. So a gamma ray burst uh, coming uh, close, uh, from the distance close to uh, the end of uh, the dark ages could uh, trigger uh, Conus wind, and uh, we could uh, estimate uh, its energetics, could uh, measure its spectral parameters, and. Uh, Excuse me, perform. please repeat. What do you mean uh, that zero and that maximum? It's the detection horizon. That is uh, a burst coming from. That maximum is the estimation, or is it the real? The estimation, the real, uh, the real is the ah, real. Okay. It's so estimation it's that a no, burst possibly nine. could. The measure is the measure of the measure of the the measure of the measure of the measure of the 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 field symbols are the detection horizon, and we see that the detection horizon is close to the line, which corresponds uh, to early estimated uh, trigger threshold. Uh, uh, the next uh, slide presents the hardness intensity correlations. We perform an, an analysis of hardness intensity correlation in the rest frame, that is the amount correlation for uh, isotropical energy release and uh, the even a correlation for the isotropic luminosity, luminosity and uh, we confirm uh, these correlations at a rather, rather high value, uh, high significance. Uh, this is uh, the probability of chance correlation, uh, the uh, correlation coefficient, uh, the number of uh, girls in the sample, and the slope. Uh, and uh, we used uh, uh, the points in these uh, figures are the type uh, two gamma ray burst and. Uh, uh, which, were, uh, which were used for the analysis, and the type 1 bursts are shown just for information. Uh, next, uh, we uh, studied uh, the collimation corrected uh, relation, that is uh, the Girlander relation and uh, the collimation corrected Yanatov relation, and for the same sample of only the burst with uh, known jet break times, we studied Yanatov and the Amati relation. And as it, could be, uh, as it can be seen, uh, we uh, can 
say that uh, the correction for the collimation uh, does not improve the correlation for our sample. Uh, the hardness duration distribution is presented uh, in this slide, uh, and uh, the triangles are the type 1 burst, and uh, circles are the type 2 burst. Uh, in the left panel, uh, they are in the observer frames, uh, frame, so we can see the clusterization, the type 1 burst, the type 2 burst, and uh, the color denotes uh, the redshift. This is the redshift scale. And uh, in the right panel, they are in the rest uh, frame. So the clusterization is not so obvious, or uh, we can say that uh, this uh, this prominent for the lower shift uh, for lower shift gamma ray burst. For lower shift gamma ray burst, that is for blue points and triangles. We can see we still can see the clusterization in the rest frame. Well, let's move on to the estimation of uh, non-evolving intrinsic or parent uh, luminosity function or energy release function. Uh, the luminosity uh, function uh, was uh, uh, historically defined for rather stable uh, phenomena such as stars, galaxies, or quasars. Uh, and uh, for gamma ray bursts, for transient phenomena, uh, the energy release uh, function also can be representative. So we estimate the both, uh, and I will speak only about the luminosity and find that all the same is applicable to the energy release. Uh, well, Lyndon Bell in 1971 uh, proposed uh, the methodology how to uh, deal with uh, selection effects, estimating the uh, luminosity function or cumulative distribution. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, this uh, is illustrated here, is this red uh, sample. Uh, but to apply the Linden Bell methodology, we first should eliminate the dependence of the variables. If the variables, that is the luminosity and the redshift, are dependent, uh, we cannot use the Linden Bell methodology. So we first estimate, uh, we uh, follow the methodic uh, proposed by Brad Lea from and Jeva in 1992, and first estimate this statistic. With our statistic is uh, close to the tau candle correlation coefficient, and uh, found uh, that uh, for our sample is uh, uh, equals to uh, 2 and 1.7. Uh, the, these values are rather low. Uh, this is because, uh, they, for example, for the luminosity, we use uh, uh, the luminosity calculated on the rest frame time scale that, uh, that uh, partially uh, reduces the uh, instrumental biases. Uh, when we found uh, this uh, well, of total statistics, we see that uh, there is a correlation. To eliminate it, uh, we introduce the uh, luminosity evolution in this functional form. Uh, we change the delta um, value until we get uh, uh, the tau equal to zero. When the tau is equal to zero, there is no uh, evolution. Uh, the variables are independent, and we can use uh, the linden bell methodology. Uh, using this te these techniques, uh, we found uh, uh, this uh, uh, distribution of so, uh, this luminosity function and energy release function. Uh, here are present uh, the corresponding values of uh, evolution uh, of, and repeated uh, this uh, result with uh, broken power law and the indices are presented here. Uh, and uh, what I have to tell is that uh, we modified a bit uh, this uh, methodology. Uh, it, uh, this methodology originally implies that uh, truncation, uh, that the selection effect is the truncation curve. That is a curve that uh, describes all the sample in general, the whole sample, one curve for whole sample. Uh, we modified it a bit, uh, applying the individual to your threshold for, for each burst. Uh, and uh, the luminosity uh, function is calculated for individual uh, trigger, trigger thresholds uh, and, uh, and the energy release evolution, uh, energy release uh, function was calculated uh, based on the truncation curve. Uh, <laughs> uh, next, we estimated uh, based on uh, this uh, methodology and calculation, we estimated the gamma ray burst formation rate. The first, uh, uh, this figure represents the gamma ray burst uh, formation rate. Uh, the colored symbols and uh, the gray diamonds are 
the constant data and uh, the gray dot and the uh, gray uh, curve uh, are taken, uh, is the star formation rate taken from the literature. Uh, the first, uh, the normalization is arbitrary. The first we can see is uh, that uh, uh, gamma ray dose formation rate based on the conosin data uh, does not trace the star formation rate. We see in excess uh, on the lower shift area. Uh, this, uh, this excess uh, uh, can be explained by selection uh, effects uh, based uh, on that uh, the lower shift uh, that it, it is more easy to uh, measure the lower shifts of in optics. Uh, the points uh, uh, are obtained uh, based on different uh, data and techniques, so that is for uh, the truncation curves. Uh, for the truncation curve uh, adjusted to be the uh, to, to delta be the same as for, in, for individual trigger thresholds for different luminosity that is on different time scales one second that corresponds to the conus wind uh, trigger time scale and uh, uh, rest in the rest frame 64 milliseconds uh, and based on the RNG releases and uh, the first points uh, uh, differ a bit, uh, but uh, in general we can see the result that the gamma ray dose formation rate does not trace the star formation rate. Uh, and uh, uh, I will summarize my talk. Uh, we perform a systematic study of 150 gamma ray bursts uh, with uh, known shifts, and uh, for all bursts from the sample, uh, we calculated their durations with spectral parameters and the observer and rest frame energetics. For um, 32 gamma ray bursts, we calculated the collimation corrected in energetics. Uh, we estimated the influence of instrumental selection effects on the uh, gamma ray burst parameter distributions. Uh, we calculated the gamma ray burst detection horizon, and we can see that uh, a burst from the end of uh, da the dark cosmological dark ages could trigger the conus wind. Uh, detectors and uh, we estimated the luminosity and energy release evolution, the luminosity and energy release function, and uh, the gamma ray burst formation rate and compared it uh, to the star formation rate. Additionally, we studied the correlations and we can say that uh, we uh, can uh, strongly confirm the Amati and Dinatopo correlations, and uh, the correction for collimation <coughs> does not improve the correlations. That brings me to the end. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Do you have any questions? What is the integral uh, uh, mass of stars for the uh, UA uh, and the opposite to your case of star presentation? Uh, and how is the way to absorb the density of stars? So could we make that better? So, we just see to the values absorbed the population. Um, no, we uh, just no, we just estimated the gamma ray burst formation rate, uh, carefully taking into account all the effects, including the luminosity evolution. Because if we don't include uh, the luminosity evolution, the gamma ray burst formation rate will perfectly trace the star formation rate. But this result is not correct uh, from the point of view of statistics. Хорошо можно оценить, да? Хорошо, спасибо. А голубые пучки это обычные старые голубые человеки, да? Из наблюдения Серые вместе с прямой – это из наблюдения звездообразования. Голубые – это по данным конус винт для светимости на шкале 64 миллисекунды в собственной системе отчета, и к каждому всплеску применены индивидуальные пороги. Я говорила там, что... Классическая методика, она огибающая включает, а мы попытались, ну, помимо огибающей, каждому, у каждого всплеска, ну, немножко свой порог, огибающий – это немножко приближение. Мы для каждого всплеска индивидуальный порог детектирования оценили, и результаты немного поменялись. 
Ну, то есть можно вот этот эффект селекции вот этой вот шлевой оценивать, а можно для каждого всплеска построить. Что мы ну, сделали? Это другое. Меня интересует, почему у вас отличаются гомосплески от, от... от Старфорд Бейс Ну, ну это же неправильно. Нет, это, это, это... Потому что массивные звезды, они синхронно взрываются вместе с звездообразованием. Там запасывания нет вообще для гомосплески. А, это я, не гравитационный волны. Я в развитии хотел. Uh, uh, По-русски, да? I would uh, also uh, uh, how to say uh, the similar question, like uh, Владимир Михайлович asked you. Uh, really, you detect uh, gamma ray burst at redshift uh, in the range less than five, or maybe six. And uh, we... Uh, had the same estimations from our so-called grief experiment uh, uh, 25 years ago. Uh, also, uh, all our birth uh, was at redshift less than five. But as I understand you show that uh, uh, principally we can detect birth uh, from higher redshift. And uh, thus, uh, this uh, range should reflect the star formation ratio. And thus, Larry uh, Hodge said that it should uh, be the same, like a uh, star formation ratio curve. Why uh, you have some uh, distinguished uh, points? There are, there are many works where, where the gamma ray burst formation rate traces the star formation rate. Yes. Uh, but uh, following the, the works of Vaketa Trasyan and uh, others, uh, we can say that uh, it is incorrect, incorrect because calculating the gamma ray burst formation rate they do not, uh, did not eliminate the luminosity evolution. If you don't eliminate the, eliminate the luminosity evolution, these uh, variables are dependent. This variable are dependent and this methodology, this technique is not applicable. To apply this, we should eliminate uh, the evolution. If we do it, we obtain this result. If we don't do it, we obtain the gamma reverse formation rate. We did it, actually. We obtained the gamma reverse uh, formation rate perfectly, following the star formation rate. То есть, если я правильно понял, по-русски говоря, надо учитывать функцию светимости, правильно? А по-русски по по говоря, да, значит, здесь есть эволюция. Ну, она так хочет говорить. Ну, она так хочет сказать, правильно? Мы я понимаю, мы с вами показываем. Вот, Владимир Михайлович, ее мысль именно такая. Ничего там не должно меняться. Ну, у нас мы реально... Не надо, не надо, не слушайте. В общем, я хочу сказать, что... Гамма всплески могут быть совсем... Можно... Надо выдавать экспериментальный результат. Я не понимаю, если у вас 150 всплесков, ну пусть вот при Z, вот Z 0,5, 0,6, вот сколько-то штук, 10 штук там. Ну, как сказать, сколько там звезд образования, мне объяснить. А, ну, мы пробовали... Без стыр с пышком каким-то. Как сказать, сколько там звезд образования? Я об этом говорю, что там точно завышено. I agree, that my idea that it's very large error. Yes, the errors are large, of course. Very large error at a small redshift. Нет, вон там зеленые какие-то вообще висят. А, мы пробовали разное разбиение, в частности, по константам. Я думаю, причина резко. в том, что вот это вот эффект селекции учитывается, это сложно. Эволюция светимости? Не-не-не, селекция, что вы это рубили там, что вы лишних всплесков, ну, когда селекцию берете, вы же поправку селекцию вводили, Конечно. что вы задрали это все. А мы разные пробовали. Вот тут okay. на картинке как раз вот эти точки, они сразу заметили. Владимир Михайлович хочет сказать, что вы пробовали, но не все. Ну, хорошо. Что нам еще следует попробовать? Я хочу сделать замечание на русском. Оно не касается этого все. Просто есть еще один эффект, о котором я постоянно говорю. Последние 45 лет. Ну, ну, последние 20 лет. Есть явление прекурсора. Я не понимаю, почему до сих пор вы не обработали ваши данные, конусы. Это уникальные данные, единственные, может быть, в мире. 20 лет там летают. Нам нужна статистика прекурсора, потому что это ключ к проблеме гомосплеска. Прекурсор – это курок, который спускает эту проблему. И никто ей не занимается, потому что 
все комьюнити на Западе занимается. А они всяк триггер устроят, что они прикурсом не ловят. Ловят задним образом. Задним образом ловят. Потом дорожка-то пишется. Вот одно из интересных космологических приложений прикурсора. Близкие гомосплески имеют самый далекий прикурсор 200 секунд. Правильно? Но если у вас есть гомосплески на Z десятка, то 200 секунд превращается в 2000 секунд. И вот предсказание, что должны быть прикурсоры больше 1000 секунд. Вот их надо искать там. Это будет доказательство, что максимальное время прикурсора вам даст самый далекий объект во Вселенной. Вот, просто я сформулировал. На английский не будем переводить, они еще украдут эту а, ну это жесткие, короткие, мягкие, длинные. Сейчас покажу. Да, да. Но это две группировки гамма-плесков. Yes, we performed... Uh, they applied the physical uh, classification uh, instead of a phenomenological based on uh, the current duration distribution. Uh, the type uh, wonders are uh, the merger uh, origin and uh, typically short heart, and uh, the type 2 birds are the collapsar orig uh, origin and typically long song, but not always. And uh, we took uh, these classifications from the literature. Uh, uh, but uh, when uh, it was not available from the literature, we uh, performed it, uh, in particular in work of Dmitry Svinkin, uh, based on the hardness uh, du duration uh, data. And uh, here we see two clusters, uh, but it is uh, in the observer frame. And in the rest frame, uh, the clusters are closer, uh, they Uh, are prominent still for uh, the low redshift gamma radius. Yes, and for all redshift they are not so obvious, not so prominent. В общем, если говорить по-русски, то в э, системе отчета источников всплеска кластеры не такие очевидны, они как бы приближаются. Ну, тут можно видеть, потому что у всплеска типа 1 у них в основном маленькие красные смещения, а у типа 2 они разные бывают. Соответственно, кластеры уже как бы не такие очевидные, вот как вот здесь. А, на диаграмме э, синим цветом обозначена вот эта раскраска по красному смещению. Синий – это всплески с маленькими красными смещениями. Если вы попытаетесь посмотреть только на синие всплески, вы, вот темно-синие всплески, вы увидите, что, в принципе, два кластера сохраняются. То есть э, вот, немножко меняется вот эта кластеризация в системе отчета источника всплеска. На тейку мы применяем здесь физическую классификацию, а не феноменологическую. То есть не просто короткие и длинные, а вот, если все-таки их по физической и в природе по возможности разделить. The result is, co is considered in the present study uh, for 10 lost gamma ray bursts. Uh, we, uh, we obtained with Global Robotic Telescope's Netmaster. Full automated observations allowed to get, <laughs> to get unique data for early optical emission. The obtained results is compared with X-ray emission with the use of SWIFT or orbital observatory data and gamma emission uh, with the use of SWIFT but, uh, but, uh, but burst alert telescopes data. Uh, gamma ray bursts are one of the most unexplored objects since their detection uh, by Vela satellites in the 80s. 
the new programs and instruments have provided uh, an accurate and numerous GRB's date. Uh, the study of gamma ray bursts has received, uh, received an exceptional boosts, uh, boost thanks to the SWIFT mission, uh, which has enabled rapid uh, follow-up radio to X-ray observations of GRB's. However, despite a very large number of such fast follow-up observations performed by SWIFT and by ground observatories, the characteristics of the central, central gene that produce the GRB are still unclear. The compact, the compact object is uh, the result of the core collapse of a very, of very massive star. Oh, yeah. Or the, mm -hmm. or the final merger of two neutron stars, neutron stars, neutron, or neutron stars black hole binary. Light curves in both cases are good predicted in the fireball model. Studying of light curves can be useful in determination of GEB's origin. It is known at least two scenarios for long and short gamma ray bursts as massive star core collapse and the merger of neutron binaries that can sufficiently describe the event. The case is two sizes of uh, one scheme um, is known, by, is known uh, as relativistic uh, fire mo model, which includes interaction between internal and external shocks. The consensus is that the afterglow radiation is emitted when ultra-relativistic ejector interacts with the circumburst medium, driving a forward shock, which moves into the medium, and the reverse shock, which propagates uh, into the um, back backwards through the ejector. In particular, the emission due to the forward shock can, in principle, last indefinitely. External shocks occur via the interaction by the burst ejector uh, with a relativistically moving shell and stationary interstellar medium. These shocks are more relativistic than internal and are believed to create an afterglow in optical radio uh, with, within seconds of the GRBs. External shocks model can explain the duration and the observed wavelengths. Although, uh, the internal shocks are the mechanism for producing higher energy gamma emission, which cannot be emitted by thermal processes. They are produced by the collision, collision of multiple uh, shells traveling at slightly different velocities. Uh, the correlation between different types of emission can suggest of this uh, common origin. Uh, the signature of a GRB may be decomposed into two parts, prompt emission and afterglow. During the prompt emission, GRB emits gamma rays and the afterglow is more lasting process contained X-ray, optical, ultraviolet and radio emission. The power law disp decay displayed by GRB's afterglow suggests that they originate from a relativistic blast wave decelerated by its interaction with an interstellar medium. Jet collides uh, with the ambient medium to form forward shock wave. Reverse shock propagates backwards through the ejector. Uh, so you can see here uh, characteristic of studied GRBs, um, 10 GRBs uh, which we obtained. Um, about the GRBs, uh, I can say that uh, uh, they were lost uh, because they were unpublished uh, and Mm. And we found it in comparison uh, with a uh, uh, GRB table, with, no, with Swift side GRB table, and uh, with, uh, compared with GSM circuits. Mm -hmm. So, this is the characteristics that were uh, used in this study. You can see a point, point in time, uh, parameter uh, 19, uh, uh, Z, uh, uh, the, um, it is most important time, yes? Yes, it's most important time. Uh, I compared the uh, most important time with uh, the parameter uh, that 19 of uh, gamma ray burst to um, 
А за пауэр лейд, ну, так. Here you can see the early timeline scope of GV 13903. It's a very uh, interesting verse because uh, we, uh, we had obtained a dead light curve. And you can see a simultaneous decay in three bands in uh, gamma, x-ray, and optical. Uh, also, you can see that uh, observations of master uh, were done. Uh, <coughs> yellow dots. You can see yellow dots. Uh, you can see uh, upper limits. Three upper limits. And uh, four optical dots. Uh, so you can see that optical observations were made before uh, before time of uh, um, maximal energy re release of gamma ray burst. <coughs> that, uh, so that's uh, one of the rare uh, cases. Uh, well, on the table three, you can see uh, more. Uh, more scaled. There, it's one there, but uh, on the three degree you can see the scale. Also, you can see that uh, uh, three bands are uh, consistent. Uh, next, I will say that uh, if uh, we see the correlation in three bands, um, it can be a reason for internal shocks because uh, because both uh, gamma, X-ray, and optic situations were brought um, simultaneously. Mm. Uh, so, uh, the group, mm -hmm. uh, the sample of uh, 10 gamma readers, which I found, uh, which we found, uh, I divided into three groups uh, by the correlation criteria. Uh, the first group is uh, full correlation, you can see in gamma optics and uh, x ray. And, and as I said earlier, they can be produced from one source from internal shock. Uh, here is, you can see the uh, GLB 397 and uh, 14, 12, 25, 8. The group number two uh, is uh, um, so, uh, um, part, of, part of correlation. You can see or correlation between gamma optics or correlation between uh, X-ray optics uh, here you can see the later diagram and optics in case of 12, uh, 12 uh, 4, 4, 8. So you can see it clearly. Uh, here you can see a correlation, not very uh, accurate correlation, but uh, between optics and x ray band. Uh, and anterior correlation between uh, gamma, gamma light curve and optics. And actually, uh, here you can see correlation between gamma and optics and anti correlation uh, with X ray light curve. Mm. So, if we uh, see correlation, we can say that uh, this emission in the uh, bands can. Uh, can, can be sourced uh, from one, one way. And uh, if we see anticorrelation, we can say that uh, the emission uh, 
produced by other me mechanisms. So, uh, uh, if we see correlation, then, then we uh, can say that uh, gamma, for example, uh, if we see gamma and light correlation, that can mean that uh, both uh, both emissions have an origin in internal shock. And if we see anti-correlation, then uh, we can um, propose that... Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that uh, the emission has uh, his origin in external shock. Okay. And so the third group of uh, anti-correlation. Here, uh, you can see correlations between uh, all three bands. And uh, so we can say that uh, gamma, gamma emission uh, uh, have been produced from internal shock and other types of emission uh, have been produced from ex external shocks. So in this research, I try to uh, consider uh, the sample of gamma reverse. And uh, what, can I, what can I say? That uh, first of all, the middle time pointing of master robotic telescopes in this sample is 77 seconds. Uh, so, uh, in some cases, the time pointing is uh, less uh, is less than uh, the time of uh, maximum energy release. Uh, of uh, gamma ray burst. Mm. And uh, what can I say? Uh, the correlation between the optical and high energy light fields favors the properties of the common origin uh, supremacy uh, and uh, internal shocks for first and external shock for third group. Uh, correlation of three bands for means internal shocks and anti-correlation means external shock. Uh, the same process in gamma ray and X-ray optical band can see an internal shock scenario. And uh, the, the last uh, case is uh, when gamma emission, gamma curve anti-correlate with other types, the optics and X-ray can be a result of moving those tissues through the external medium or external shock model. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I would ask when you uh, measure the upper limit of optical emission, uh, what is the uh, reason for this upper limit? It is the background uh, or really uh, the Luminosity of source uh, is sufficient that it uh, can be detected. Um, is the upper limit of uh, image, image or in uh, optical telescope? It's background. It's background. It's, background. Yeah. it's physical background or it's a soft, uh, soft reasons. Or the physical background, uh, the real light from maybe stars or no, what li 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 limits the both. Both? Yes, there are many effects. Uh, it could be uh, uh, light of sky, it could be uh, some uh, clouds, it could be moonlight. Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, upper limit of image. So but what is the worst? Uh, it depends uh, from time to time. Let's <laughs> Нет, это я сделал сейчас спасибо. Давайте because we have the uh, concerto grosso in very unusual place. Uh, I never was here and uh, there, yes. 
and I invite all people to participate. It is this uh, fantastic concert, the Russian, yeah, Russian opera solist. And uh, on the top of the building, without any uh, problem. But the problem with time, we must finish it at five post meridium o'clock. <laughs> And uh, now, uh, some changing, uh, we must starting, starting, I'm sorry, the next session, after coffee break, yes, five minutes coffee break. Okay. Not more. And we have 20 minute delay, not 20, 25. No, no, dinner uh, short uh, 1.5 times. Because the most critical for us, don't go out, sitting, please. Uh, uh, dinner, food, lunch. Lunch is shorter, uh, but uh, starting uh, on uh, corresponding to program. And at 17, at 17 August, at 17 o'clock, mm -hmm. at 17 years, you must be here because uh, several bus come to the river where we, okay. where will be take place the dinner of the conference mm -hmm. on the river, on the Moscow River, mm -hmm. very beautiful background. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, 17 August, 17 years, and 17 hours. Yeah. Very, very simply, <laughs> very simply, to, to say here that. on the, on the yes. uh, place of common photograph, phot okay. photography. So, I would like to uh, remember you that uh, the next session starting, starting at 3 o'clock, okay. not later. Okay, thank you very much and sorry for I don't know а мне посмотреть, будут ли работать все. А мне посмотреть, будут ли работать все. Ну да, но здесь надо померить аккуратно. Я была идея эксперимент такой сделать, но денег не дают. Очень беда. Конечно, конечно. Конечно. Они там кто-то там справится? А? Сам справится? Да, да, да. Там кидай на рабочем столе вас обмазь. Ну, простите меня. Я вам принципу. Вот, вот она. Напишите мне, пожалуйста. Это Ну да, да, да.
Пятнадцатая у нас второе, да, надо создать. Не, это еще первое, второе после обеда. Ну, мы после обеда. Конечно, больше. Я понял. Я еще первое. Второе после обеда. Ну, мы сейчас будем делать 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 вот Так, тебе надо Так, тебе начнет ты после обеда или до обеда? Смотри, вот сюда. Пятнадцатый день. Вот наш Да, туда Жень. Субтитры 
Я знаю, So David, uh, you uh, also must uh, copy the presentation for me, uh, just yes. because uh, oh, your family name pronunciation, Buckley. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very easy compared to some names. <laughs> That's an HDMI. Your first talk, yes? Uh, first talk. You have a first talk? Yes. I tell you five minutes before. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Because uh, <laughs> yesterday they were walking and they sent phone to that. Sorry, I just uh, wanted to invite you. <laughs> 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 you go? Yes, we Today night. Or yesterday night. Ah, yes, 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 I know. Uh, it was some. Uh, Problems with the debates. Uh, oh, okay. I, I find it uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so today night must go. Uh, it must go. Yeah. It was one day. Yeah. It was. Uh, are you copy? Yeah. No. Do copy. Uh, oh, your talk. Can I do it afterwards? Oh, you need it now. Okay. I, I could translate from this, but... Uh, oh, yeah, because you're doing it here. Yeah, that's fine. Now, people, I would like to repeat about the 17-17-17 event. Uh, yes, all free of charge, but only participant. Okay. And what about tomorrow? Tomorrow there is a discussion, but what about scheduling? After tomorrow. Tomorrow we uh, travel to the uh, museum. Museum. The Natasha will be... Uh, where is that, by the way? Excuse me? Where is it? Museum? Yeah. It's the best place. Where? Moscow. Where? In Moscow. But where in Moscow? Here in the city? It's the uh, Vedenka. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a north of Moscow. Not of Moscow. Yeah, it's a uh, near Moscow. 
But it's in the city. Yeah. Two bucks, two bucks a day to come out here to go there. Because I'm staying in the city. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's begin. Next talk is for David Buckley, the SALT Large Program on Transient. Thank you. It's very nice to be here again. I've visited a, a few times um, to the Sternberg Astronomical Institute, but this is the first meeting where I've uh, had an opportunity to meet with everyone involved in, in MASTER. So uh, I'm going to be talking today about some of the follow-up work that uh, uh, we've been doing in South Africa uh, from MASTER discoveries, but also from other transient alert facilities as well. Um, and uh, particularly I'll be talking about uh, an increasing interest uh, among South African astronomers in the follow-up of transients across uh, all different object classes. So from things that we've already heard about uh, in this meeting, like GRBs, but uh, all, all other manner of, of transient systems as well. High energy transients like X-ray binaries, um, blazars, um, and also cataclysmic variables. So this uh, first picture here just shows, um, of course, uh, master, but um, also the follow-up, one of the follow-up telescopes that uh, has already been mentioned, SALT, the Southern African Large Telescope, uh, which is a 10-meter uh, optical telescope, the largest in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, and this image here is of MONET, which is one of the small robotic telescopes, 1.2-meter uh, robotic telescopes, of which is an increasing number of these small 1-meter class telescopes that are starting to play an active role uh, in transient studies. So why do we study the transient universe? I think we all have recognized that over the last decade or so, time domain astronomy has become increasingly important. We know that particularly in the sort of objects that we study, that they vary on a large number of time scales. Um, they vary on orbital time scales, which can be hours or minutes for very compact objects. They can uh, vary on time scales of the spin period of, say, a compact star. So we're talking about time scales from milliseconds to days, hours, days, years even. Um, and so <coughs> having the ability to do uh, time domain astronomy, uh, I think, is very important to be able to probe the physics that's going on uh, in many different classes of objects. And the range of objects I've mentioned here, it's a huge number of different types of systems, gamma ray bursts, supernovae, active galactic nuclei, um, X-ray transients of all sorts, including the accreting neutron star or black hole systems, um, obviously cataclysmic variables, white dwarf binaries in which uh, there are often eruptive events due to, say, accretion disk instabilities or on the surface of the white dwarf thermonuclear reactions causing novae, um, other more massive stars that go into eruption. Uh, then, of course, there are events which are transient by the nature of, of geometry, like uh, microlensing events. Uh, and uh, this um, leading also into uh, the discovery of black hole microlensing. Tidal disruption events in the nuclei of galaxies is also uh, an interesting, fairly new field which is starting to be explored uh, in this program. Of course, there's exoplanet transits. You could sort of consider them to be transient events sometimes, I suppose. And then increasingly, we're moving to the other domains that maybe have not been so far exploited, um, radio transients, um, and in particular, uh, studying some fairly exotic phenomena which we really don't have a very good handle on, like fast radio bursts and so on. Uh, and then we've already heard, of course, about the work which is being done on the follow-up of multi-messenger astronomy in, in the likes of uh, gravitational wave and neutrino objects. So a wide variety of classes uh, of objects uh, which we can study. Um, so 
there are now quite a number of facilities that have been developed for doing transient astronomy, and some of them are, have been built for a specific task in mind. So we've heard of some of these up here, like the Panama Transit Factory, which will be, um, I guess, morphed into the Zwicky Transient Factory, uh, Assassin, Rotsi, Booties, Watcher. These are all uh, transient alert facilities, but with a particular theme. In the case of many of them, supernovae, in the case of Rotsi, Botis and Watcher, uh, and of course, part of Master is, uh, is GRB follow-up. Um, other transients just come from the nature of, of uh, larger scale surveys for which the prime science driver is not the discovery of transients. So, for example, Ogle and Gaia, um, which are doing surveys uh, of the sky, uh, pick up by virtue of the fact that if a transient event goes off in a uh, field that's being observed by these facilities, uh, then alerts come from those facilities. PanStars, SkyMapper, these are other uh, wide field, high etondu, high area coverage, and, and uh, um, uh, low depth, um, or, or um, fainter, going to faint limits. Um, so out of these, we get transients as a byproduct. Then there are facilities which are dedicated just for the discovery of transients, of which Master, I think, could be classified as that, or is classified as that. The Catalina Real-Time Survey, three telescopes that have been, been doing a survey of transient events, originally driven by the desire to discover minor planets, but uh, has led to a huge amount of work on, uh, on other classes of transients, including supernovae and cataclysmic variables. So the number of transient facilities is, is ever increasing, and of course, eventually, it's going to be completely overwhelmed in about uh, three or four years' time when the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, an eight-meter telescope, which is going to be surveying constantly the southern sky to a limit of 25th magnitude, will discover a million transients a night. So, you know, we're moving from a regime where at the moment we can sort of handle things on the order of, of several transients a night, but imagine what it's going to be like uh, when the LSST comes online. So I thought I'd quickly mention the, some of the facilities that we have in South Africa. Uh, this is our plateau. Uh, it's on about a 2,000 metre uh, plateau. Here's SALT, a 10 metre telescope. But you see a whole lot of other little telescopes here which have been growing steadily over the years. Uh, and these are, in many cases, robotic telescopes. So for example, the Los Cumbres network of one meter telescopes. There are three domes there which belong to that network. Um, we've had, since 2000, we've added six telescopes in the one to 1 1.6 meter um, size range. Uh, and I'll just quickly run through some of these. Uh, we have a, a 1.4 meter infrared telescope from Japan, which has been very useful for doing simultaneous JHK imaging and imaging polarimetry. Uh, in the infrared. Uh, we have uh, this Monet telescope from the University of Göttingen, uh, which is a 1.2 meter uh, telescope currently sort of in commissioning at the moment. There are a number of other facilities specifically to look at exoplanets, for example, SuperWASP uh, and Solaris, a Polish program to look for um, uh, the uh, exoplanet transits. Um, we have, um, as well as the largest telescope uh, in uh, the world, or in the Southern Hemisphere at least, we also have possibly the smallest, which is KELT. This is a uh, 40 millimeter um, size telescope, but with a thousand square degrees, and it's doing a wide shallow survey to look for bright um, transits from, from exoplanets. Uh, and of course, in 2014, uh, we established, uh, end of that year, we established the master facility, the first uh, master two network in, uh, or part of the network in the Southern Hemisphere. And then later this year, uh, we should begin operating MIRLICT, which is another transient detection telescope, a 0.65 meter telescope, which is designed to look for optical counterparts of radio transient 
transients coming from Meerkat. And Meerkat is the uh, uh, South Africa's, uh, if you like, phase a part of the square kilometer array, 64 dishes, uh, which will uh, give the most sensitive survey um, uh, in the southern hemisphere. And in fact, uh, even more sensitive than the VLA when it's uh, fully operational, which should be about the beginning of next year. So this, to give you an idea, this is uh, the mirror uh, of salt. It contains 91 individual segments. Each one of those is 1.2 meters across. So this telescope has very good light gathering power. It can look at things uh, that are, are very faint, and so it's very efficient to look at uh, um, objects. The exposure times can be quite short um, for uh, brighter objects. Um, and so the current strategy uh, that we've been um, taking with using SALT uh, is uh, to basically make a sort of uh, a, a, man a decision manually with human intervention, human decision making about what objects we follow up on and what things uh, we want to observe. We can't observe every single transient because we don't have uh, that much telescope time to do that. Um, and of course, for most transient information that we get, all we really get is a position, a time, and an amplitude. No other information, typically. Maybe color information in some cases. And so we need classification. We need spectra. We need spectral energy distributions if these are, say, multi-wavelength objects into uh, other wavelength domains. We want to see how these things vary over time, so we'd like light curves as well. So as I say, this program with SALT follow-up is um, uh, uh, been going now for about uh, just over a year uh, and we believe that the experiences gained in this program will help us inform how we approach uh, and develop strategies in the next decade when we have the LSST and how machine learning techniques can be used to make the decisions about what is worth observing uh, and uh, and so on. So. SALT is a bit of a peculiar telescope because um, you might think, well, a 10-meter telescope, you can look over the whole sky, but it's designed uh, with efficiency and cost in mind. So it's not a typical telescope that you can point anywhere. It's a fixed altitude telescope, and you can only observe things in a window, which is shown here, this annulus. So this is our angle, this is declination. You can only observe inside this region, not in the middle and not on the outside. So this is a 100% Q-scheduled serviced observing telescope. Astronomers do not go there to do their own observations. They put in a, a Q and they're automatically scheduled depending on what sort of conditions uh, are required and so on. Um, so in some ways that's restrictive because it means if something suddenly happens, it might be in here and it might take a couple of hours before it's uh, viewable. On the other hand, what we can guarantee is that if it's in the southern hemisphere and in the declination range from about minus 76 to plus 10 degrees declination, uh, that sometime during the night we will be able to observe it. So uh, in many cases, the follow-up that is needed is not, does not have to be instantaneous like, say, for a GRB, which does, but can, can have this delay of, say, uh, a, a few hours if necessary. Um, so in that sense, because the telescope is purely Q-scheduled, purely service observing telescope, with all of the instruments available at any one time, taking 30 seconds to swap between one instrument and another, gives us the flexibility to do whatever types of observations that are appropriate for the follow-up. And so some of the first science that was very successful and is continuing to be successful is uh, in terms of time domain program is the rapid follow-up of supernovae uh, and w watching their development with time as is shown in the plot on the right and here's a whole lots of different types of supernovae uh, and this is an ongoing program with three different groups uh, in SALT uh, who are interested in in supernovae. Of course when MASTER came along uh, it really opened up the possibility to find uh, transients in real time at our own facility rather than relying on uh, information coming from say Chile or Australia or wherever um, and so 
uh, in that regard, it's been incredibly important for us to have this feed-in of optical transient detections, which we can then follow up um, rapidly uh, with our other telescopes. And um, so far, this, this is a little bit dated, um, but uh, I think it's probably six months, accurate to about six months. You can probably comment on this, Evgeny. But uh, this is the sort of total number of uh, transients that were discovered in the first 19 months of operation, uh, about 280. And the vast majority happened to be, not surprisingly, because it's similar in the Catalina real-time survey, um, cataclysmic variables of the dwarf nova variety. So these are uh, disk instability systems where the disk goes into a hot, optically thick state, uh, and they increase uh, greatly in magnitude, typically more than several magnitudes, but sometimes up to maybe um, seven magnitudes or so. Uh, and the ne next biggest group are supernovae, and then you can see the rest of them down here. Um, and so uh, one of the uh, first uh, successes in terms of following up, uh, I'm just giving a few little examples here, uh, was a follow-up of this uh, blazar that was discovered um, uh, and by master, and uh, we determined a redshift. Uh, fortunately, the polarization technique that was uh, mentioned by Evgeny could be used to show that it was strongly polarized at about 10%, uh, and further Fermi observations have been done on this system as well, um, and uh, uh, the results of that are being written up in the paper at the moment. In terms of the CVs, what have we learned? Well, this is the uh, distribution of amplitudes of outbursts of the CVs discovered by the whole of the master network. Uh, and you can see that uh, um, most of them are sort of around four magnitudes, but there's these outliers that have very high, mag uh, high amplitudes. And these are interesting systems from an evolutionary point of view because they're typically low luminosity, uh, low frequency outbursting systems which are uh, at the bottom at the shortest orbital periods where these evolve due to gravitational radiation. So studying this group is, is quite important. And uh, uh, on the right here is a distribution also uh, from the Catalina real-time survey, which shows us, I think, quite a similar distribution uh, to master. Uh, and uh, the fact now that Catalina is, has ceased to operate in the southern hemisphere means that MASTER is really the only facility now which is able to continue to discover uh, CVs, apart from maybe um, facilities like Assassin, uh, which are, of course, dedicated to supernovae. So here are all the CVs discovered to date. It's a little bit out of date. It's probably more like uh, 750, I guess, but uh, who knows. Uh, and that's the distribution from the Catalina uh, real-time survey in the first paper that was in 2014. Uh, where they discovered about 900. Um, they have different criteria and so on, and they, they avoid the galactic plane more so than, than Master does. And this is the comparison of the, uh, the 206 discovered at SAAO. Uh, they're basically the same population that the Catalina Real-Time Survey has picked up. This is the distribution of brightness and number. Uh, and you can see it sort of cuts off here at 20th magnitude. Um, and so even though Catalina goes uh, down to 22nd magnitude um, compared to 20 at best for master, we're not really missing anything of the population here. Um, so master is essentially looking at the same population as, uh, as Catalina. Um, and we followed up on a number of these CVs. This is just an example of a dwarf nova which had a um, three magnitude outburst, uh, typical spectrum which shows often H alpha in emission, sometimes weaker emission, and then the other Bauma lines are typically absorption with some infilling as the, the disk going from an optically thick to back to a quiescent state. Uh, one of the more interesting things from my perspective was a magnetic cataclysmic variable that was discovered, uh, and this is a, a system which is an eclipsing uh, white dwarf system with a strong magnetic field, uh, and what is happening is the gas is threaded onto the magnetic field uh, and as it eclipses, it first of all uh, covers over the, um, well, the, the white dwarf gets covered by this material. So there's a dip before the actual eclipse by the red dwarf. And this is um, a model 
of uh, uh, basically uh, modeling the stream emission uh, and fitting that to the data uh, which uh, is shown there. And again, this is a work which a, a student of mine is uh, about to submit a paper on. So the SALT Transient program began in earnest last year uh, and it has a guaranteed uh, time to run for five semesters uh, and with a significant amount of, uh, of time. It's in fact the only current large program in SALT of which 60% of the time is in so-called priority zero, the highest override time. So if we have a target, we uh, jump to the top of the queue to observe. Um, and so we have um, uh, all transient classes are being covered except supernovae. You may, may ask why? Because there are already three other supernovae groups who are doing supernovae. So our main interest is not supernovae unless they're particularly interesting. And Vladimir says, please, please, I need this spectrum of this supernova because it is interesting, maybe because it's a um, uh, gravitational wave source or something. Well, it wasn't, but anyway. Um, so what we're trying to do is classification spectroscopy. Um, we can do further monitoring observations, like looking for radio velocity variability. Spectropolarimetry is another technique which we've just started. And high time resolution. I'll show examples of this. And this program represents astronomers from five African institutions and four of the SALT partners from Poland, India, the UK, and the US, a total of 32 investigators and then further students on top of that. So it is a major program. Uh, and the transient alert, uh, where they come from, uh, optical ones come from Master, Assassin, Catalina, uh, Ogle as well, uh, and Gaia. Then the high energy ones come from these satellites and, and, and so on. So the many classes that are covered are all mentioned here. Uh, and you'll note supernova do not appear. But there are these things that were alluded to yesterday, these sort of intermediate luminosity uh, things between novae and supernovae, uh, of which there are quite a number of infrared examples uh, for which it's been puzzling that we've had no optical counterparts detected from these infrared luminous uh, eruptive uh, objects um, which have been detected by the Spitzer satellite. Um, so here's some examples. This uh, is a, uh, a microlensing event, uh, gravitational uh, black hole microlensing event uh, from the Ogle survey. Uh, and these are tidal disruption events from the Ogle survey. So this is the light curve of this tidal disruption event. And a spectra were taken with SALT, uh, with ESO here, to look at how the spectra evolved in time uh, during the uh, uh, evolution of the light curve. Uh, this is some examples of spectropolarimetry of flaring blazars that have been detected primarily in the Fermi, by the Fermi satellite, by the LAT experiment. Uh, and these are known systems. And what we're trying to do is investigate how the polarization changes. So this is a, a raw spectrum at the top. This is obviously a, um, uh, a quasar, which has a strong emission line here. But if you notice here, this is the linear polarization up at about uh, nearly 10%. And this is the position angle of the electric vector. Um, this is an even higher uh, signal to noise of a blazer uh, where the linear polarization gets up to 25%. Um, and uh, the position angle you can see is constant. So what people who are interested in these are, uh, are doing is trying to correlate the, uh, the position angle changes coming from the jet uh, as a function of the outburst of the system where the, uh, the synchrotron radiation from the jet begins to dominate or change. Um, this is an example of uh, an object which was a nova discovered by Master last year in the SMC. Um, so this was a nova that reached ninth magnitude. Here's the light curve. These three points up here are the Master wide field pre um, alert, uh, I mean pre-detection observations, uh, the master detection observation is there together with the simultaneous assassin. They both found it almost at the same time. And then this is further observations on the decline. It's an interesting object. This is some high-resolution spectra over here, lower-resolution spectra here. 
it's basically a, um, a helium nitrogen novae with a, uh, a very likely high uh, mass uh, and probably the most luminous in the SMC with the uh, absolute magnitude of minus 10 and a half. Uh, and so we've done quite a lot of nice optical follow-up and swift follow-up as well. Uh, and uh, this has recently sub been submitted uh, to monthly notices. Um, then uh, uh, some uh, super soft source. This was uh, another SMC object that was uh, discovered by Assassin where we've done follow-up spectroscopy. Uh, we've detected a strong helium-2 line, which is modulated in velocity. Uh, we also obtained follow-up uh, Los Cumbres Observatory photometry. And uh, when we do a period periodogram analysis, we find a period about 4.6 hours with these uh, one-day aliases. Um, so this is a rather interesting system as well, these super soft systems. Uh, X-ray binaries, we've been looking at both high mass and low mass X-ray binaries. Uh, so this is an example of two high mass X-ray binaries. SMC X3 uh, went into outburst in 2000. Uh, and 16, a super Eddington outburst. This is the spin period of the system, which before outburst and then during outburst, it's spun up. You can see that it's spinning faster. And in fact, the next, thank you. Uh, the next curve shows the spin evolution with time uh, from about 7.8 seconds at the beginning of the outburst down to 7.77 here. Very nice data. Uh, and these are the uh, X-ray light curves over that period of time. Uh, and this has just been accepted uh, for monthly notices uh, as well. Uh, so for the lower mass X-ray binaries, um, because we are able to react quickly to any alerts that come, uh, we've followed up on a number of different systems. This new uh, uh, probable black hole system discovered by Maxi. Uh, which had three outbursts, actually four outbursts over 16 months. Very rapid, very short-lived, uh, like a two-day time scale from maximum to, to quiescence, as is shown in these light curves. Uh, and the spectrum is rather boring with very little features in here. This is the salt spectrum that was obtained of that. Uh, and that was published uh, earlier uh, this year. And we're working uh, right now on a variety of other uh, X-ray binaries. This is uh, SWIFT uh, 1357, uh, which is a black hole system with a 2.8 hour period. And uh, in the an earlier outburst in 2011, these dips were discovered uh, with uh, by observations at the Isaac Newton telescope, um, which had a characteristic time scale of about a thousand, a uh, hundred seconds. Here's the, the the periodogram. This is what I'm talking about. And over time, this sort of evolved to lower and lower frequencies, and it was interpreted as a, a moving out of a, of a torus, of an obscuring torus in the, in the system. So when it went into outburst uh, uh, this year, we, uh, obtained, we've obtained a number of different observations with SALT, and these are light curves over a period of uh, typically an hour or so. Uh, this is optical, and you can see these similar sort of dips, maybe not as deep as the ones in the 2011 outburst. And this is correlated with new star X-ray observations, of which there is no actual correlation. They seem to be totally uncorrelated. Uh, and this is uh, observations on a later date in May. And the periodograms of the three observations are shown here. And again, what we see is this um, around 100 seconds or so QPO moving to low and lower frequency over time. It was suggested that this um, obscuring torus model would lead to polarization uh, in the system. And we undertook salt polarimetry of it, spectral polarimetry, and it's, it's unpolarized. So that doesn't uh, uh, exactly meet with the expectations. So I'm just going to finish my talk with uh, a few other things that are coming, coming along um, in support of the transient follow-up. I've mentioned the existence already of the Los Cumbres system that we've been using for target of opportunity follow-up. Monet will be coming online fairly soon. There's a new robotic one meter telescope shown here, which is currently being commissioned. Uh, and these instruments all include CCD cameras uh, and even high time speed um, electron multiplication CCDs. 
uh, and eventually spectrographs, which will be fiber fed for low uh, dispersion uh, work. Um, and uh, I mentioned Mealit. Uh, this is the telescope. It's a 0.65 meter telescope. This is a photo I took just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and that's also being commissioned to be operational in a few months. The idea is that whenever, uh, wherever um, Meerkat looks, we will look with this optical telescope, which has the same, uh, um, same field of view. So if uh, a radio transient happens to go off in the, uh, detected by Meerkat, then Meerlicht will, will see it, um, provided it's obviously not cloudy. Um, we're also uh, working on a program to automate the whole uh, um, observation scheduling, which at the moment is a more manual process, particularly for things like GRBs, where you really need to react quickly. And if I happen to be asleep at the time and someone sends me an email to say, quick, quick, there's a GRB, that I'll avoid that. So we have this uh, software that's being developed, uh, which will allow for uh, events to basically trigger an existing program and full, fill all of the information in like the position, the time, the finding chart, uh, and all of that. So <clears throat> my final remarks are in this slide here. Um, I think you'll appreciate from what I've said that transient uh, multi-wavelength astronomy is uh, uh, a growing uh, and uh, very uh, fruitful uh, endeavor in South Africa. Uh, SALT is well suited to the follow-up of many different types of objects and there are new facilities coming on board like Mealect and so on and other one meter robotic telescopes. <coughs> so the opportunities coming in the future with, uh, for example, Meer Meerkat, uh, the HESS uh, gamma ray telescope in Namibia, uh, the CTA, LSST uh, and so on, I think uh, uh, are great and uh, of course we have uh, plenty of opportunities to collaborate as we've had this successful collaboration with Master uh, and so I welcome discussions about that in the future uh, and I'll just end with this slide. Thank you. We have some questions. Feel free to please because we are later with the program. Okay, which one? Which one? How many blurs? How many blurs? That's for the South. Two. Which one? Which one? Yeah, one of them was uh, uh, a um, uh, 2006 uh, object, uh, which was a Lyman-Bragg galaxy with a redshift of 3.8. <laughs> yes, and the other one was a. Uh, featureless system which we didn't really get very good spectroscopy of. The VLT X shooter is far better at doing that. What we're hopeful of is when we get a bright one like the one that Vladimir mentioned, 11th magnitude, unfortunately that's too far to the west at the moment, we could do spectrophorometry of those which would be really good. Okay. Yes. Danny, what about the near Earth object? There's nobody really interested in our community. Um, we do have uh, a, a planetary astronomer, but she's interested in like um, Kuiper Belt objects and Pluto and uh, not things that are uh, close. On the other hand, uh, NASA are going to be um, establishing one of their telescopes, of, I think it's called Atlas, which is already one in, in Hawaii, and they're going to establish one in Sutherland specifically for near Earth um, objects. But it's not a science that we pursue. Uh, well, although I should say that the Polish community, there was an asteroid group there, and they have used salt for, for studying near Earth asteroids, but not South, South African astronomers. But must have detected one of the asteroid. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, I, I know, yeah, no, I know Master is probably, yeah, Master finds lots of uh, asteroids and, and comets, but, but they're sort of things that are nice, but we don't study them. Yeah. What is the scene of the station? Um, it's uh, median scenes 1.3 arc seconds at ground level and somewhat better at the height of the telescope, maybe a factor of 0.2. So say 1.1 would be the median scene of the telescope. Okay.
I do follow. It's media or it's media. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. The second presentation is Vladimir Vladimir Rowe, mm -hmm. Red Nova in M31. Five minutes, I, I tell you five minutes before. Uh, good afternoon, dear friends. Sorry for my English. Uh, in my sh short presentation, I I will talk about luminous uh, red nova and uh, its discovery and uh, multicolor uh, photometric observation. Uh, luminous red nova are a rare type of uh, <coughs> stellar transit that are typically more luminous than classical nova, but uh, fainter fainter than supernova. Uh, and characterized by reddening color as they fade. Uh, existing plateau phase in light curve. Uh, M30 line RD was the first uh, stellar transient which uh, was identified as a luminous red uh, But canonical and well-studied luminous red became uh, via uh, 838 eight, eight monosolities. Uh, the observation of presenter in V1309 Scorpion in the form of contact and eclipse binary with a period uh, 1.4 uh, provides strong evidence for merger model in LRN. Uh, here is a master robotic telescope network. Uh, you all saw this image. Uh, and and uh, in the right side, uh, you can see uh, master Kislovsk in the telescopes was discovered uh, luminous red nova in Andromeda by uh, Shumkov Vladislav. Yes, and uh, you can see how uh, um, Apogee CCD camera and our photometric unit. In <coughs> left side, you can see image with uh, the transient, and right side, you can see image without transient. Uh, upper limit in right image is uh, 19.0. Um, this you can you can see uh, animation is eight. Images. Uh, <coughs> there are about uh, eight days uh, of observation. Yes. Um, uh, the data reduction. Oh, <coughs> data reduction. Uh, my point has been carried out with master network telescopes for 72 days after our discovery of this LRM. We have scored. 386 white light frames and uh, 130 frames uh, in photometric bands. Uh, of, uh, 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 each image with uh, 18, uh, 180 exposures. Uh, for calculation, we used uh, dark frames acquired in evening before observation and twilight flares. Uh, it's worth to note that the uh, collaboration frame clipping and astrometric reduction was performed totally uh, automatically regime in each observatory. <coughs> observatory. For our photometry, we used um, 15 Archimedean frame area centered on object with about 60 comparison stars from magnitude 13 to 17 in V band. 
Uh, we used a uh, IVF uh, package for performing photometry with op optimal criteria for each frame. Uh, the resulting instrumental uh, magnitudes for standard system we used uh, 56 uh, nearby stars from UCAC for catalog. Uh, R and I magnitudes calculated from this catalog. Uh, by the following equation, you can see this. Uh, sorry, sorry. You can see the equation in slide. Uh, you, <coughs> here is our main uh, plot uh, of our observation uh, in apparent magnitudes. Uh, you can clearly see. Uh, the popular stage about 50 days. Here you can see uh, our observation in uh, absolute monitors. Um, in maximum uh, luminosity was about uh, 9.4 magnitude. It's uh, more than classical uh, nova, but less than uh, supernova. And uh, for, for monitoring M31 L11, we used we have adapted uh, code Stella designed by Blinkov Sergey Ivanovich. Uh, the best fit for M M31 LRM 2015 observation is obtained with a model uh, with a code. Uh, the model has a total mass about uh, three solar mass and uh, common envelope radius about 10 uh, solar radius. Uh, thermal energy uh, 10 in 48 degrees R is released throughout uh, the whole ma mass. Uh, the initial system consists of two components, uh, an inner core and the outer shell. Details of inner core aren't taken into account in simulations, and, and the core is treated as a half sphere in given mass. The explosion was triggered by the release of thermal energy 10 in 48 degrees arc in near center region. The propagation of shock through a common envelope of measuring components of the binary triggered oscillations of bulk of <coughs> star mass. But the star still remains gravitational bound uh, as a result of outburst on the outermost layer with the mass about uh, 2.1 solar mass has been ejected. The kinetic energy of outburst was small, 10 in 45 arc. Uh, uh, whereas the remaining transferred energy powered the expansion of heating, <coughs> expansion and heating of the gravitational bound demand in radiation, the null. Uh, here you can see a uh, simulation, uh, <coughs> simulation photometric uh, line uh, in. Uh, uh, in the low pa panel show the speed of photosphere level in this model. Uh, the speed of photosphere level it's about uh, uh, 606 six or 900 kilometers per second. And, uh, uh, we discovered a, uh, we discovered a technique of discovery of NOVA M31 LRM and long term observation and is large curve with master network of robotic telescopes. Uh, our interpretation led us to infer uh, relatively high total projective mass. The long plateau, 50 days, uh, required total mass uh, three solar mass. Uh, correspond <coughs> corresponding expo <coughs> explosion energy should be uh, lower than in 50, <coughs> 48 degrees F. The total kinetic energy of ejected envelope is uh, about 10 in 45 L. <coughs> the proposed interpretation of the explosion is consistent with the 
uh, evolutionary scenario where star mentioned is a natural stage of the evolution of close, close mass stars. You can watch the slide number six. Okay, I, I don't can watch the supernova. Where is it? You can point. Ah, okay, it's uh, the middle. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, some question? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, the next presentation. Arte Busnetso, second historical bars of D404 signal. Half hour. Five minutes before I tell you. Okay. 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 Ну, что-то у тебя флешка не открылась. Флешка не работает. Сейчас, одну минуту. На своей Флешка. Где не работает? На белом? На белом не работает. Ну, посети Сейчас, да, этим занимаемся. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Okay, I can begin. Uh, uh, my presentation about uh, second historical birth uh, V404. Uh, uh, and uh, our observation uh, on June uh, 2015, Swiss Space uh, Observatory, uh, Swift Space uh, Observatory uh, was triggered uh, by the most uh, bona fide uh, black hole candidate uh, in our galaxy. Mm -hmm. Uh, master uh, robotics telescopes uh, network of identical uh, robotics instrument uh, uh, deployed uh, across four continents and uh, equipped with photometrics capable of operating in the B, the R, and I bands uh, and carried out uh, parametric observation. Uh, uh, you will see the uh, first uh, uh, image, no, first proof. Uh, no, this spot, uh, a white proof from first pointing by Ural and Tunkater scopes. Uh, uh, you We'll see uh, our photometer uh, mm -hmm. in uh, December of uh, 2015. Uh, we give uh, um, a second GCN address uh, about the source uh, master robotic telescope located in uh, Bogovation Stunka was pointed to the V404 uh, trigger. Uh, uh, after uh, four uh, hour in Bogovations and after trigger time, uh, five hour in Tunka. Uh, our observation was made uh, directly after sunset uh, at each uh, observatory. Mm. Uh, is, uh, uh, in result, uh, photometry of the object and its scenario compassion stars was performed using IREF uh, package with uh, an aperture of uh, 0.8. Uh, the HM, uh, the date of tent in each filter uh, were then correct applying the AstroKit package. Mm. Uh, you will see uh, 14 optical flares. Uh, flares. We also discovered the, uh, 11 similar flares in X ray related to the optical flares. Uh, however, the optical flares, uh, namely 0, 01, 2, and 9, do not have uh, X-ray counterparts. Mm. Uh, uh, we plot uh, even X-ray flares followed by the optical ones, uh, and uh, X flares uh, uh, in. X X-ray from uh, integral observatory. Uh, that's now blue uh, is optical, red uh, is X-ray. Yeah. Uh, Uh, as uh, on CANF uh, in the photometric section in central epoch, this is the way between the optical uh, and X-ray light crew 
the variables is optical flux followed uh, clearly behind X-ray flux variation. Uh, 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 we compute the time lag. We use the next uh, formula for cross correlation correlating to date. So, uh, uh, no, the, in result, uh, uh, we think uh, this correlation function. Uh, correlation function, functions uh, for uh, fire O6 and O10. Uh, so that's not. Uh, axis X uh, this time, axis uh, Y uh, this energy. Uh, because the orbital uh, parallel of the binary system uh, about uh, six days, uh, we is investigate whether or not uh, the observed effect depends on the orbital phase. Uh, next plot uh, based on the result uh, maintained above. As we pointed our above, we identified uh, identified of total of uh, 10 cases with a most likely correlation between optical and uh, X-ray flux uh, variation. So, uh, this is our optical points uh, with uh, orbital phase. Now, this delay time different of no, uh, is this important? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, rate uh, optical uh, and uh, x ray flux. Uh, followed by, uh, by orbital phase. Uh, no, uh, the delay effect and uh, the change in the optical X-ray ratio do not show any dependence from the orbital phase. Uh, uh, we estimate the luminosity of as. Um, no, uh, we found both very short and a uh, few hundred seconds optical legs. Um, interpreted that uh, one mean optical legs are obtained from response of uh, X-ray radiation from the inner disk in the outer disk. And uh, finally, we note the the depends of the observed effect uh, delay from X-ray to optic. Uh, the effect of uh, variability optical X-ray uh, relation and the parallelization of optical uh, radiation from the orbital phase was not detected. Uh, perhaps the effect is washed away to be physical, not uh, stationary of the disk accretion result in the uh, non-stationary of uh, X-ray radiation and its processing into optical radiation. Uh, no, thanks. Some questions? Okay. Thank you very much. The last presentation. It's Natalie Irina, 1500 Master Transient Detection for Thunders.
Начало с этого. Нет, начало с этого. Давай, начинайте, что мне сделать. Да. Открой почту в слайде. Dear colleagues, I would like to tell about uh, um, 100, uh, 1000 and a half master uh, optical transient that was detected by uh, master auto detection system. Uh, master is the best uh, alert and follow-up op optical system, uh, which uh, made the most important uh, input to uh, study uh, gravitational wave uh, error box during first uh, gravitational wave event uh, detected by LIGA. Uh, master is not uh, only the telescope. Uh, this is a very fast uh, colored and twin telescope that made it unique U in optical instrument uh, in world. But the main master feature is uh, master software uh, because uh, you now uh, thousands of optical telescopes, but only several of them can discover uh, optical transients during their outburst uh, in real time uh, to give other uh, facilities possibility to uh, study uh, these events during uh, uh, outburst phase. Uh, matter software independently of human uh, looks for ephemeris, looks for weather conditions, uh, open roof, uh, make calibrations, uh, make reduction, uh, and uh, make start survey if there wasn't any alerts. Uh, we study is alerts uh, from GRB, Swift, uh, Fermi, and other. Uh, we error boxes, we study gravitational wave, uh, Liga and Virga error boxes, we study neutrino error boxes from my scope and interiors, and we uh, search for optical transients in these uh, error boxes. Uh, so between alert uh, and inspection mode, uh, master made own uh, survey. Uh, our software is unique that give you all information about all optical sources at every images. Uh, in uh, one, two means after CCD readout. Uh, it means that you uh, know which of uh, optical uh, sources at every image uh, are catalogued or uh, new, which of them are moving, uh, which of them of are stationary. Uh, for every uh, object, we have master uh, history. Uh, it means that we now uh, all behavior of every uh, optical source uh, during uh, since uh, 209 year for uh, NASA sky and since December uh, 14th year uh, 4000 sky. Uh, we uh, study several system. Uh, we study several types of objects. Uh, they are um, gamma ray boosts, optical counterparts, uh, supernova, nova, dwarf nova, uh, binary eclipsing system like Epsilon Auriga, uh, QSO, Flares, asteroids, uh, comets, uh, and so so. Uh, let us uh, see uh, several of them. This is the example of detection of GRB, uh, which is in the center. Yeah, not contrast image. Uh, this is a real uh, optical counterpart. Uh, it was detected by uh, GPC. Okay, it is. <laughs> it's uh, ratchet. Yes, uh, two and four. Uh, uh, it was dis detected by. Uh, I see it in my computer. It was detected by our software. This is a real candidate. Uh, for example, we. Um, this is uh, the example of supernova. Uh, this uh, supernova was found during a master inspection of uh, gravitational wave 
event. Uh, its spectrum was uh, uh, was made by salt and by ground several months later. Uh, this uh, supernova was uh, detected on also on South Sky and uh, uh, and uh, you see our discovery image uh, and uh, several references. This is the example of uh, uh, possible supernova in bright galaxy. This is uh, one A supernova was. The type was uh, detected by Magellan telescope. And uh, there is a very bright uh, object, NOVA, that was dis detected uh, by Master OAFA after detection system. Uh, in uh, last year, and was studied then by uh, several uh, instruments. Yes, in Argentina. Uh, every our telescopes has uh, all identical uh, equipment and identical software. Uh, so every this transients was detected by software. Then human can uh, analyze and uh, make uh, the final decision. So each our transients are. Uh, uh, and robot also prepare our software, prepare uh, the initial telegram that we will uh, publish later in ATIL or GCN. This is an example of uh, Quas of Laris. Every uh, object is in, in the middle. This is uh, the one of uh, sources uh, that has uh, epsilon auriga type there is its uh, bright state uh, no. no there is its uh, fade faded state and uh, this is a uh, archive image with uh, high state this is the eclipse and some says some statistic uh, after we um, after the, dis <coughs> after the installation at the uh, South African Observatory, uh, we uh, detected a lot of thousand optical transients. And uh, uh, for last years, you can see uh, some uh, distribution on uh, magnitude of, uh, on ampli uh, distribution of amplitude. Uh, of each outburst and the uh, distribution of uh, master style input to all number of discovered uh, optical transients by net uh, in this year, uh, in uh, 16th year. You see that uh, the most popular uh, amplitude that we detected uh, is from five from three to five uh, it uh, this um, transients um, has uh, a magnitude from uh, nine as nowhere uh, up to 18 for dwarf nowhere or supernova uh, also we detected the optical transients up to 20 uh, magnitude
it's a it's a cataclysmic variable of uh, nova like that goes into a, a low state called the vy scott torus this one. that one yes it's the one that we've done a lot of follow-up work and we have uh, light curves and spectroscopy of it. You have a spectrum, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not an epsilon erigi, it's a VY okay. Scott Taurus type. I think Did I you publish it in ITM? Oh, uh, that is a well known fact because we published a spectrum from the six meter telescope. This object? Yes, yeah, yeah, this object. We have this. Oh, no, 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 uh, no, we're, oh, we're, we've got a paper which is currently um, in progress, which includes the the master and assassin like curves. No, unfortunately, you don't want to say about us. No, I told you. Why? They're <laughs> still working on it. Carlos, what else? I wonder if the auto detection system. Compares directly the images. No. For auto detection system uh, identified all objects now and uh, has the base of object at these coordinates in history, and we compare the coordinates and the magnitudes, not images. We extract uh, yeah. sources and compare the sources. And then you look only the, the numbers. The, no, no, the. We compare our. Uh, object with uh, Usno B and okay. take into account uh, the history at master previous images. Uh, it means the history of magnitude uh, behavior at these coordinates. So we compare coordinates with magnitude. Okay, thanks. Okay, well, the last question, please, because we are later. Uh, uh, what is the percent uh, of observation now uh, uh, can cover uh, master uh, network? Сколько, какой процент, э, можете быть нам наблюдать непрерывно ночное небо? Uh, Если okay. нет, то какой процент? We observed during uh, winter time uh, 24 hours per, uh, per day. It means uh, our observation at winter time. Нет, в сети, в сети. During winter time we can start from Amur observation and the finish in uh, Canarias. Uh, we have possibility um, to, if uh, you have snow or storm, of Облака то нет. Имеется в виду, ну, что да. географическая была. Погода, она везде разная. Мы не 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 and almost every night we observe at every observatory. Uh, 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 Нет, не мы, конечно, это товарищ Шустов, который на, на разработку обсерватории взял 30 миллионов рублей. На разработку. А, за это за Рашин, на самом деле. Да, спасибо большое. Мы Я помню, мы подводим статистику. У нас получается вот сушеные опции, если вот брать вот Нет, нет, я вам вопрос задал такой. Сколько вот сейчас именно взять на курчике? Владимир Владимирович, подойдите, я вам покажу презентацию.
А, то есть вы хотите, чтобы у вас еще и перевод был? Ну, я, 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 нет, по клавишам. Да, то есть, смотрите, это начало, первый слайд. Вот да, следующий слайд. То есть, вот он идет история, да? Потом современная. Нет, почему? У нас вот название идет. Мастер 2, вот, благодаря. По страницам нет, здесь я не писал. Здесь вы скажете, ну, что строительство, когда мы сделали строительство, было поставлено в начале тестовой. Потом вот современная его комплектация, потом вот сверхновая 2009 года. Вот она в цвете. А вот это, это у нас... А, это 2000, это сверхновая, это гамма 2012 года. А, сверхновая, по-моему. Это мое. Да, сверхновая 2009 года. Да, 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 вот она. 12, 12, 12 года. Вот, потом это астероид, вот, а потом идет видео, то есть вот после вот этого слайда идет видео, вы на него нажимаете, вы на него нажимаете, и вот он, получается, начинается воспроизведение. То есть он идет прям пролетом. А, то есть известный. Да, известный. Ну, известный. Нет, это да. Астероид прилетал. Да, астероид прилетал, и, по-моему, если не ошибаюсь, либо Денис Денисенко, или кто-то или Женя делал вот это вот движение он делал вот этот вот пролет у меня, то есть они прям вот как мы его вели, да, то есть вот он, вот, то есть вот он как идет, его вот то, что про продлительность снимали. Дальше у нас идет, это уже 16 год, ГРБ-10.1, 16.10, да, то, здесь тоже видео, то есть вот вы показываете, что вот она получается вспышка. И у тебя оптика какая? Вот этот, нет, вот этот у нас уже есть. Нет, нет, нет. У тебя здесь какой фокус на расстоянии где-то летит? Так, вот здесь. Здесь как бы стандарт. А, или это китовый? Это, вот это вот сейчас. Больше нету. Ну и все, больше нету. И потом Сэнксью, спасибо за внимание. Здорово, Сэнксью. У нее китовый тоже, у нас тоже китовый набор. Я смотрю, что он такой же. Да, мы теперь идем на обед, надо сейчас надо со всеми сейчас переговорить. Я вот это сейчас отнесу, то есть хомяки. Ну, да и далее, да. Так, это ты, Сэнксью, у нас чуть-чуть один. Так, что, кого? Правильно скинули? Куда вы скинули? Пошлите поживем, а я уже с второй сутки не этот кадр найди. Южноафриканский. Я просто один кадр сниму и все. Изменение блеска на малому приватному Yeah. Это которая в 2016 году. Ну, она вот у нас. Мы ее тоже сняли. Это которая в Аргентине. Да, 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 да,